Yo, what's up, guys? Hello, and welcome to the commentary version of the Fire Red Round 2 world record. I got this record two days ago now. So while it's fresh in my mind, I thought that I would go ahead and do commentary. So I am just going to let it roll. So attempt 2748. Interesting. I have to remember that for next time. This was I, I think I think Sapphire was 2699. And that was my last record. So this one took slightly longer as far as attempts, but I think reasonably longer as far as actual grind. Um but yeah, this run was I'm talking about like this run as a whole, uh, like the category was super interesting for me. It was a lot different than anything I'd ever done. And I kind of tackled it by myself for the most part. Uh, Ixarian was the last person to run this. And it had been a long time since he ran it. So here you're going to see me open my trainer ID and check the number there it was 3402 um and i'm actually going to oh my god you are shitting me okay <laughs> so it was attempt 2749 <laughs> uh <laughs> I actually did not know that was at the beginning of the video, and I'm the one who made the highlight. No, no, no. Not take two. Not take two. We're going to keep rolling. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so, attempt 2749. You'd think I would know that. But, anyway, I'm going to check the... <laughs> four four seven six three four is my trainer ID. I am sticking that into the Squirtle program, which tells me which RNG seed I'm on and all of the possible Squirtles. And now I'm going to choose a Squirtle, and it looks like I have chosen a really good Squirtle. Um, off the top of my head, I didn't really remember which Squirtle I got, but yeah, this Squirtle is great. It's a little bit low on HP and a little bit. It's not low on speed, but I wish it had like one or two more. But yeah, this Squirtle is actually sick. Uh, Rash is the best nature, plus special attack, minus special defense, and special defense is the least important stat. Um, special attack is obviously the most important stat. We take plus special attack nature. We only take super good special attack. 30 and 31 IV. But uh, other than that, I would say defense is probably the most important stat. And this one has great defense, more than enough. So right there, you saw me wait like, I don't know, 15 seconds or something. Uh, I was waiting for the frame that this particular Squirtle was going to be generated on and then pressing A on the last text box when it's going to be generated. And hopefully hitting the frame where the one frame window where it was actually uh, the correct Squirtle. You can spend a ton of time resetting here, like upwards of hours, if you get unlucky, trying to get the right frame. But uh, this Squirtle had 19 HP at level five and 11 IV HP, which you can see this Squirtle is supposed to have, is actually the highest IV that can still have 19 HP. So I am hopeful that I got it. I should be faster than Bulbasaur and I should five shot him with no crits. So I still don't know if this is the right Squirtle or not. We're just hoping. And so now I'm gonna check stats here on level up and I was mostly looking at special attack and special defense at the bottom there. And those were the correct value and with the HP and the fact that the rival fight went correctly, uh, I am pretty sure this is the right Squirtle. I think I actually might be sure at this point. Um, and so now the run actually gets to start. I actually don't know how long I was resetting here for the Squirtle. I, th I want to say it wasn't too bad. But 
Um, so yeah, we take that Mark Guy potion. Uh, it's actually not always necessary to get that potion, but sometimes you want two. So it's worth it to get that one and then potentially pick up the one in the forest. So, yeah. Skipped a level four Radata there. Not worth killing level fours, but definitely worth killing level two Radatas. So this XP is useful for Brock's gym in particular, and it also potentially allows you to kill a second thing to get even more levels for getting bubble for the forest, basically, which helps with weakening encounters. It improves the win rate on the Weedle fight a ton because you can't miss, and you actually force out the Weedle with just one turn of Torrent, which I'll explain Torrent when it comes up. But... You know, I guess I explain what round two is. I mean, I guess, since there's not really anything to talk about here, we can talk about that. So I guess some of you might be wondering what, why this is different than the normal fire red, like any percent speed round, just beat the game as fast as possible. Or like, why do you beat the elite four twice? Well, basically the idea is that there is post-game content in Fire Red that didn't exist in Gen 1 um, with the islands, like one island, two island, three island and stuff. And after you beat the game, there are a number of, or there's a side quest with a number of parts that allows you to like link up the Kanto region to the Hoenn region, I think the Gen 3 region, so that Pokemon from later gens can be like traded into this world, I guess. So... In order to unlock those side quests, you have to unlock the national Pokedex. And in order to do that, you have to catch 60 unique Pokemon. So that means Squirtle, War Turtle, Blastoise counts as three, uh, etc. So what that does is that once you complete that quest, the Elite Four buffs up their team with new Pokemon, new moves, and much higher level. So... The goal of the run is to catch 60 Pokemon, do the side quests, and then beat the Elite Four once they've buffed up their team. So, yeah. So, actually, interesting. I do I do go for Bubble here uh, before uh, Viridian Forest, which is interesting. The reason that I actually did this was because I have very good attack. Um, a lot of times I'll skip level 3 Pidgeys because they'll take 4 turns to kill or do a bunch of damage to you, which makes it like not worth it in the long run to get that extra XP. But in this case, I had super good attack and I crit the Pidgey, which was quite nice. That definitely, uh, regardless of whether it was correct or not, and it was, uh, saved time. And pretty reasonable round 1 overall, I would say. Not too bad, not too amazing. High HP. So, um, but yeah, there's, I guess, like, you would consider them to be, like, catch sections in this run, right? And the first and one of the most important ones is early in Viridian Forest because you don't want to have to backtrack there. And there's also a Pokemon that saves, like, a ton of time, but it's rare, Pikachu, in Viridian Forest. And... You want to get that if you can, but a lot of times Pikachu just kills the run, so it's kind of stupid. Yeah, I guess that's fair. So, um, I already have 16 Pokemon marked on... Uh, you can see at the bottom it like shows how many Pokemon I have caught, right? So, I already have 16 Pokemon marked. Those 16 Pokemon I will get every single run no matter what. That's Squirtle, War Turtle, Blastoise, Game Corner Pokes that I buy with coins, Abra Clefairy... Lapras that you get from Silphco. I will get those Pokemon no matter what every time. Also, I will be updating the count with what a Pokemon is worth. So, for example, when I catch Caterpie, I am going to mark three Pokemon because I'm going to switch train that to evolve it into Metapod and 
butterfree every single time that I catch it. So it's worth three. So that's why you'll see me catch like one thing and it'll go up by two or three or something. So the first couple tiles of a new area are very unlikely to give an encounter. And I got an encounter like pretty shortly after that wore out. And it's Pikachu. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, oh, another dead run. Another dead run. <laughs> Weaken it once. That's all that's worth it. Got Growl on turn one, which is nice. So now we start tossing. I believe this is a 50% catch from here with a Pokeball at this health. And we actually won ball it. And this is when I'm like, okay, maybe it's the run. This this literally saves so much time, or potentially so much time. It Because if you don't catch Pikachu, you have to go to Power Plant, and Pikachu is only 25% in Power Plant. And you see my Pokemon caught went up by 3 there. That's because I'm going to buy a Thunderstone to evolve it into Raichu, and then I'm going to trade it for Voltorb, or sorry, Electrode later. So it's like really really insane to get pikachu because you don't have to rely on the one and four later <laughs> so ideally i'm going to catch weedle and caterpie here you pretty much always need weedle and caterpie since they're worth three each went one ball the weedle as well really nice And Caterpie. So that's like perfect. <laughs> that's super crazy, actually. Uh, I think I've only seen this three times, maybe, where it's like I I get all three perfect encounters in a row because like I don't actually need or want any more encounters here. This is actually kind of amusing. The Caterpie breaks out here, and this was the most likely catch. It was actually 78%. <laughs> to get in the ball and the others were were 50 and 62 i think <laughs> but yeah um 78 is basically the the highest a catch rate can be without being like 100 percent in this game so oh that's an annoying encounter on that tile because the so basically the way it works in this game is Every grass tile you go without getting an encounter, you're actually more likely to get an encounter on the next step by a bit. And that keeps going up and up. And so if I had gotten to that guy without getting an encounter, then that, that would have reset. And then... So getting an encounter on the last tile there was actually pretty unlucky. But we crit the Weedle, <laughs> so that's nice. And got poisoned on turn one, which is sick, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, in red, you're actually, like, you know, so sad when you get poisoned. But in this game, it's actually good. Because of an ability called Torrent. So in Gen 3, Pokemon get abilities. Squirtle's ability is Torrent. He deals 50% more water damage when he is at or under one-third of his max HP. So this Metapod is actually super amusing because if you've been paying attention... Uh, there are five potential encounters in Viridian Forest, and we got all five unique encounters in five encounters, which I've never seen before. That's, like, actually super, super unlikely. <laughs> pretty pretty funny that that's in the, the record VOD. So you see me actually letting the poison tick down here to exactly five health, and that's because I've manipulated Torrent to be the exact or like my hp for both torrent and surviving i want to survive these fights but i also want to be in torrent um it's it's super 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 important to manipulate like the perfect hp value for brock's gym because torrent is very important in brock's gym and it's also important on route three so letting myself fall to exactly five hp there is like pivotal to this run so this Geodude, for example, never dies if you're not in Torrent and always dies if you are in Torrent. So that is just one example of, of many to come. Uh, this Sandshrew is a very likely two-shot in Torrent and an unlikely three-shot not in Torrent. You can see I did over half there. Um, and this guy has Sand Attack, so it's like absolutely 
it's so important that you get Torrent for this Sandshrew. Uh, it's also worth noting that the reason I go to 5 HP and not lower uh, in a lot of cases is because that Sandshrew does 5 to 7 with Scratch on this defense, with 7 being the 1 in 16 damage roll. So, like, uh, there's 16 different damage rolls that can happen uh, within a certain range, and a lot of them do the same damage at low levels, but... The absolute highest 1 in 16 roll always does one bonus damage because something something rounding in Pokemon. So one of the benefits to killing two things on Route 1 is that you get level 11 for this Geodude, which makes it a 14 and 16 range. How is that false, Stringflow? In what way is that false? This max roll is one, then all rolls deal one damage. Oh my god. Uh, my commentary has been interrupted to be patronized by something retarded. <laughs> um, so this was actually a really unlucky Onyx fight, because this Onyx... <laughs> this Onyx uh, is a 9 and 16 range in Torrent, and he missed me on turn one. Which is, like, arguably good, because at least I'm, like, pretty much guaranteed to win the fight then. But then he missed the bind and then used bind on turn two instead of tackle. So I took two instead of four. Um, so now I'm not in torrent for route three, which is kind of scary because you can lose a ton of time to not being in torrent. But it's fine, chat. Arcadius can just, just somebody clip it with a little dolphin icon. It'll be fine. Okay, so this is a 1511 Brock with a reasonable chance at Torrent and uh, all three catches from Viridian Force. This is actually a pretty sick run right now. I will, I will say, like at this point, this run is very, very solid. It looks like I'm. It's not because I lost time, um, but that's because I caught everything. World record the that I'm comparing against caught two bugs, no Pika, and PB caught one bug. So, yeah. Uh, so we actually sell Rock Tomb here, the team we get right away for money because we have to buy so much stuff here. Uh, you actually can buy repels here, unlike Gen 1, which is super nice. But you buy all your status healing items. You buy potions, like normal potions for the rest of the run, which because of the way that Torrent works, healing like low amounts of HP can be really nice. Because a lot of times, a lot of times Torrent isn't about getting Torrent. It's about keeping Torrent and also surviving like crucial attacks while also still being in Torrent. So you want to be like towards the upper end of Torrent and sometimes healing just a little bit of HP is important for that. Uh, and that's why the HP IV, a lot of people will think, oh, you don't want a high HP IV. You want to have less HP so that you take more damage and get into Torn easier. But that's not how it works. You actually want to have as high HP as possible because that both A, increases the range that you are in Torrent for because you have a higher max health. And then uh, it also allows you to be at a higher HP and tank moves uh, from Torrent. So... I got Tackle from the Caterpie there, which put me into Torrent, which is nice because that's why the Weedle died. But now I'm going to stall on this Caterpie with Tackle because I want him to either String Shot, then I'll be slower, and then he tackles, or just Tackle is, is better. And so what that did was it gave me uh, perfect Torrent for level 14 and level 15. And if I hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have even been in Torrent for this level, right? Because I would be at 13 out of 37. So I sacrificed one turn, uh, potentially a turn and a half if he had string shotted and tackled, to save up to six turns on the next two fights. Because these first two bugs are ranges, the second two bugs never die, and then on the next fight it's range and never dies. So... Up to six turns saved, and at least three turns saved for that. Torn is just super strong. It's actually really annoying, <laughs> because getting perfect, like, 
don't quite die to Brock, but do have Torrent for Route 3 kind of HP is really, really difficult. Uh, and inconsistent. But this run it worked out pretty well. Even with the kind of trolley Brock fight. Or Onyx, I guess. In perfect Torrent right now. So... In this next bush right here on Route 3, there are two really good Pokemon. One I need and one I want. The good one is uh, Jigglypuff, which is 10% to encounter. With half of them being level 3, which you kill a lot of the time, which is annoying. Uh, and the reason Jigglypuff is good is because you can't get it anywhere else, and it evolves with a Moonstone, so it's worth two Pokemon. Uh, that was kind of a troll pass. Because that girl is a, like a walker, like a spinner. You can... Uh, you, that's like a trainer you can battle. Right? So, I kind of had to do that little bag manip to get past her. Because she can't walk or turn for a certain number of frames after I like actually open my bag. But I was uh, a little slow about it. Because I only recently started skipping that bush. I skipped it because I was, I was both in Torrent and have very high attack IV. Which means I'm just going to kill a level 3 Spearow. If I, or sorry, a level 3 Jigglypuff if I find it. So instead, I'm going to go for Spearow after Mount Moon. Uh, in that menu, I registered the TM case to the select button. Since I don't have the bike yet, and I'll, I'll actually have to enter the TM case a few times. It also helps with spinner passes because uh, just pressing select to open the TM case works as a bag manip, which is faster. Uh, and so this is the Moonstone right here to the top left that you would get if you got Clefairy. Or, sorry, Jigglypuff. So, I'm actually fighting a guy that I don't fight that often. This Rocket, which is actually a Spinner. Uh, and I for I forgo, forgoed, forgoed <laughs> the, uh, the Spearow before Route 3 and potentially catching a Zubat in Mount Moon because I have exactly enough HP to tank... 15 out of the 16 damage rolls from Hyper Fang. Uh, from this Rattata. So, uh, yeah, so Hyper Fang does 11 to 13 on this defense. So very good defense and, like, having just enough HP there and also being very likely to kill a Jigglypuff if I encountered it made me go for Spearow after Mount Moon where it has the same encounter rate. Uh, and, but the other encounters that you can catch there are better. And uh, fighting this guy is actually better because he will give you Torrent more often. There are actually two other optional trainers that you fight sometimes in Mount Moon in certain situations. This guy you fight if you have enough HP to tank Hyper Fang, basically. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to let this guy see me here if I am high IQ yeah so this this rocket is kind of silly but basically if it's faster to go one tower to the left and then walk right in front of him so he doesn't have to walk to you but that wastes three steps with my repel and my repel isn't quite gonna last to the end of Mount Moon but that's one of the benefits of fighting one of the other optional trainers is that it saves a bunch of steps so your repel lasts to the end easily. So this fight looks super easy, right? Because I press water gun fight, uh, water gun twice, and they both go down. But that's because I'm in torrent. So fighting that rocket uh, and getting tackle from him put me into torrent. And of course, I got quick attack from the rat attack, but that doesn't always happen. And so uh, just save two turns there. That Zubat has supersonic. Like, Torn is just so important in the early game. It's it's actually crazy. The Scrimer's a huge troll. It has Disable and Poison Gas, which is super annoying. But he also has Pound and Harden, which is fine. Also, uh, a damage range with two water guns if you're not in Torrent. This Voltorb is a speed tie at this speed. And 9 and 16 to die to water gun. So that was actually very lucky. Not that it, like, really matters, but, you know, it's just a couple seconds faster. 
and coughing is 14 and 16 to die, and he can actually kill you if you, he doesn't kill, but uh, just one of the reasons to run very good special attack is uh, those ranges are worse if you run 28 and 29, and anything lower than 28 is like not even considerable. So I gained three tiles from walking in front of that rocket, and yeah, you see my repel didn't actually last either way, but going to pick up the great ball here. Uh, there's a couple reasons to pick this up. For, uh, for one, it guarantees a Spiro catch at around half health, so you'll always get it, and you have to catch Spiro to trade for Farfetch'd. And uh, a lot of times you can substitute an ultra ball for a great ball later in the run, and since this money route has been cut to be like bare bones perfect with the middle, like as low ultra balls as you can uh, get with affording everything else that you actually need. Uh, the Great Ball can actually kind of save your own. So we're going to go for Spiro here. Ideally, we just get Spiro in one encounter. And we do. Spiros can range from level 6 to uh, 12 here, which is actually one of the benefits of catching Spiro after Mount Moon, is that getting a higher level Spiro means it trades for a higher level Farfetch'd, and that can be more useful for weakening Ghastly specifically when you go to catch it. So, this split has actually been really sick, honestly. Uh, really good. We got the two-turn rocket. We got the uh, torrent for the rest of it. The speed tie went on Voltorb. The first encounter Spearow. First ball Spearow with Pokeball. Uh, all super good. So, if, for example, uh, you watched Ixarian's round two run, you'll notice the route has been a little different at this point. I changed a bunch of things. Um, this this is the thing that I'm most sure of is that getting level 20 for Misty is very worth it. And you have to get the rare candy there, like go out of your way and then backtrack a little bit to get the rare candy before Misty to do that. But um, it's worth it. For reasons you will see in a second. Um, I took the PC there because I needed to use three potions to heal my War Turtle to full. And I was forced to take a PC at some point in this run because I had a full party and I need to get Abra in my party uh, at some point before I fly to Pewter later in the run to get Diglett and trade for Mr. Mime and stuff. Uh, and it turns out that there's actually no more PCs that I'm forced to take in this run. And so doing it there, where I get a uh, save three potions in the time from using three potions, uh, and also make more room in my party for uh, picking up Eevee later, is actually uh, it's actually just best to do it there in Cerulean. Okay, so two rare candies. Level 19 gives you Bite. Level 20 gives you uh, a very favorable damage range on this Staryu. As you can see, I did like well over half. It's actually 98% to die without, I think, without crits <laughs> to, to, to just two bites, which is super, super important because you don't want to be getting too many water pulses since water pulse can confuse. The Starmie is a huge troll. That was actually a pretty standard damage roll there. You actually can two-shot this, but it's not particularly likely. And if you miss the range she'll super potion which she has one super potion so i tackle there to guarantee that it'll go down on the next turn without triggering the heal range uh, you could also water gun there to achieve the same effect which is safer because if you miss tackle it can be really bad but it's faster on average to tackle so this run is actually sick <laughs> Right now, this run is so good. I have both Bugs and Pikachu. And... Like... A bunch of potions. I have six potions left. It's actually sick. Um, and I'm almost four minutes ahead of Record. Uh, Record loses a lot of time there because he catches Jigglypuff. He evolves into Wigglytuff with the Moonstone, like I was talking about. And he also catches Ekans while looking for his Spearow because it takes him a little while to get his Spearow. 
So I'm like really ahead of record here, but not quite as ahead as it looks. But then like I actually am as ahead as it looks because I have Pikachu in party and he doesn't and Pikachu saves a ton of time. Uh, so this fight is actually so bad. Uh, it's it's kind of like you would think it was bad, but it's so bad. This Pidgeotto has sand attack and he loves to use it if you're over uh, at higher HPs. So I lead Bite there to try to flinch him if he sand attacks, though Bite plus Water Pulse is, I think, a 98% range, so uh, I never actually missed that. But this Bulbasaur is the real problem. Sleep Powder miss into Mega Kick Hit. Feels so good, man. So this fight is actually like a defining moment in the run. Like, you can lose so much time to this fight because the Bulbasaur has... Leech Seed, which makes you switch out. He has Sleep Powder, which starts eating up your valuable healing items. If you miss Mega Kick on the wrong turn, you just die. If you have really bad attack and you bite Mega Kick and miss the damage range, it puts the Bulbasaur into Overgrow, which is his form of Torrent, and then he just one-shots you. Or, like, half-shot, you know, kills you from the HP you're likely to be at. Uh, that fight sucks. I've lost a lot of runs to that fight. In, in the any percent speed run as well, I've lost a lot of runs to that. But, yeah. Um, really good fight. <laughs> really, really good fight. Oh, it's also worth noting that World Record takes his PC. The PC that I took on the last split. He actually takes it on this split. So, I'm even more ahead than that right now. So now it's resident sleeper time. Uh, if chat has any questions or things that I might should have explained, now is a good time. Probably like the only time I'll do this because these fights are all completely free. You actually see me. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing me. I actually stand up and go turn my air conditioner off at this point because my hands are getting kind of cold and I want to focus on the volume of the run because I know this is the fucking run. <laughs> I took the Persenberry this run because I have very high defense and very low special defense, which means that the Starmie is uh, much more likely to use Water Pulse than it is normally. So if she's more likely to Water Pulse, you're more likely to get confused. And I'm going to talk about the split differences. HP increase on level up? I mean... It works the same in every gen. Skip to the spinner pass. No, I don't think I'm going to skip. Do I always turn on controller overlay at this point? No. Fishing sucks. Uh, oh, yeah. That's actually a, a, a good point. So, fire red and leaf green are the same. Like, so this is like the only thing that can go wrong here. I have to hit this mega kick on Oddish and I don't even die if it misses. So, it's whatever. Um, so yeah, that, that fight is whatever. Uh, so Fire Red and Leaf Green are the same category. And we run Fire Red because we buy Pokemon from the game corner, Abra and Clefairy, and those Pokemon are a lot cheaper together, uh, in Fire Red. So that's why it's better. Will there be a Mega Kick hit counter? Well... Uh, spoiler alert, it won't be necessary. I mean, I talked about making room in my party. Yeah. Uh, next game is yellow, of course. God, dude, Nugget Bridge is so troll in this game. Like, it's so boring. But it's just because Water Pulse plus Torrent is OP. Please, God, no, basically counter. Yes, EVs uh, factor into your damage calculations. You don't farm for EVs, but you account for the EVs that you get. Yeah, I'm resting my hands today. It's actually, like, it's getting better, I think. I'm kind of scared to go back. Uh, I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow. I'm going to be learning yellow and stuff, but yeah.
I mean, I've been streaming long hours trying to grind for this record. This record was actually driving me insane because I should have had it so many times. That's one, that's one thing we can talk about. Like, I literally have <laughs> should have had record in this game so many times by now. So the fact that this friend finally got it, God. Um, technically, yellow is worse for mashing, but if you're good, you can time a lot of the text boxes because of the buffer mechanic. My sub count is from the recorded run, yes. I mean, this run has crazy RNG. Like, this category is, like, sick because it's so interesting and, like, decision-making and, like, fun and different. But, like, as a competitive category, this category is cancer because it's just too much. Uh, I did two things that were retarded in this run, but they're both kind of funny and, like, stupid and, like, I don't care. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I, As far as, like, the fights in this run, I actually, I actually found one mistake I made. In all of the fights in this run. And I don't think anyone's noticed it yet. Uh, I'll point it out when we get there. Okay, so this is actually interesting. This guy is a spinner. And he there's two tiles he can see you there. And if you run past the spinner, they automatically see you. So the reason I let that trainer walk up to me, uh, the, the hiker right before him, is because it works out to where... The timing with which that spinner can spin and the timing that you like actually get past him if you do the movement frame perfectly, uh, he's only 1 in 16 to see you. And you have to bag manip him twice to get past him, like 100% safely. So it's better to just take the 1 in 16 chance. Because even if he sees you, he only has one Pokemon. It's a slow poke and it dies in one hit, so it's like not that bad. So yeah, it's faster to just get the setup. Uh, that spoilers dark matter. <laughs> but no, I'm not that disappointed. Uh, normally, Brendan Cox, I do record my gameplay separate, like, locally, in case the internet goes out. But this run, I actually forgot to. <laughs> so... Monka S. Yes, I'm done with Fire Red. That's why I'm doing commentary. Okay, so this is like the one fight that sucks. Uh, the first fight and the last fight in this split are the worst. You have to hit two kicks here. Uh, and if you've missed, like, kicks, then sometimes you'll be out of kicks. So, yeah, you have to hit kicks. And, like, there's no alternative to kicks because, like, the grass Pokemon don't die with any other move and they have shitty moves like uh, Poison Powder, Stun Spore... Absorb, critting you for a bunch of HP, Razor Leaf, all kinds of nonsense. So you just have to take Mega Kick. There's nothing else you can you can do, really. Just subject to the whims of 25% misses. But yeah, now that section's over. Thank goodness. And this, you know, when I when I said before that I like went and got up and turned my air conditioner off because like this was the run. Well, look how far ahead of record I am, and record doesn't have Pikachu. And yeah, he has Puff and Tough, but that's not most of the time save. Like this time is this is probably my best run ever at this point, I think. Like I'm literally just so far ahead. My PB that I'm 39 seconds behind has one of the two bugs, Weedle and Caterpie, and no Pikachu, and no extra pokes besides that. So, like, <laughs> it's crazy. That was, that was one of my fastest runs ever, and that was, like, with low pokes caught. So. Yeah. So now we start the part of the game, <laughs> the entire rest of it, where, you know, besides Nugget Bridge, where everything starts wanting to destroy you and it starts here with hit 10,000 mega kicks section 
Uh, the Strowsy doesn't die to any move except kick. Or, okay, Water Pulse in Torrent is a range, but it's a shitty range, like 3 and 16 or something. So you have to kick the Drowsy. The Drowsy has uh, Hypnosis. He has Disable. He has Confusion into Confuse. But my luck on hitting the Strowsy is actually, like, really good for some reason. So, yeah. We actually did not. I can't remember getting, like, mega screwed by that Drowsy, but he can, like, actually destroy you. Um, so, like, for example, here you'll see me go left and then down. Uh, it's faster to... And I'm not going to do it here because you can't without losing a step. But I w And you can't do it here either. But it's faster to move in the direction that you're facing when you're coming from a stationary, like when you're not moving. Because uh, you get, like, what's known as a turn frame, which wastes 8 frames, 60 FPS, and... Gives an extra chance for an encounter, too. So, this Raticate dies to Mega Kick every time, but it also dies to Torrent Water Pulse, which is just another example of Torrent being good because you don't have to hit a kick, and your kick count is sometimes important here if you get unlucky. So, oh man, this HP is so good. I must have said this in the run, because this HP is literally perfect. Uh, so because I have Badish special defense here, Rash is minus special defense, and I only have 10 ID, and 7 is the lowest I'll run with, uh, with minus nature, though I actually wonder if that's correct. But anyway, uh, take the mark for super potions and repels, need both of those uh, for rock tunnel and, and such. And the super potions are for this split too, actually. Uh, this Ivysaur in the boat rival fight after I rear candy is going to do 20 to 24 damage with vine whip and 24 is going to be the highest HP that I can be at and still be in torrent for. So I just tank the vine whip and I am also in torrent and the Pidgeotto doesn't die unless you're in torrent and he leads Pidgeotto and the Pidgeotto has sand attack. So yeah, this is like actually Perfect HP. Which was really, really nice. Uh, and also, you pretty much have to rear candy here. This is maybe like the one suspect thing about the Sex P rep, but like I don't see a way around it because this fight is so bad at level 26 because the, the IB sword doesn't like to die. We actually get quick attack from the Pidgeotto, which sucks because he ruined our HP because now we're dead to Vine Whip, so I can't just bite in. Uh, so I super potion here because I don't want to risk just dying because he's going to vine whip every time since I'm dead to it. And then bite, flinch, kick hit. So both Bulbasaur and Ibisaur were sick this round. You can easily lose a minute to, to each of them uh, if you get worse fights there. Because, again, a sleep powder into leech seed into mega kick doesn't kill into nonsense. Okay, so this is also one of the probably the biggest route change overall from what Record did before I ran this was Record is actually just going to skip Surge and come back later. Uh, and there's a number of benefits to doing that, like Surge loves to kill you, one of the worst fights in, in Pokemon Spearing as a whole. But the problem with doing that is that Surge is the gym leader that lets you use Fly. So to skip him, you have to just backtrack from Lavender all the way to Vermilion later. 
and it's pretty slow to do that uh, on most runs. So that, along with the fact that using your rare candies early and getting Surge's XP early is useful for making these sections more consistent. Uh, it's just a lot less headache to do this. There's also a lot of other nonsense you have to do to like make the route for skipping Surge work, like pick up Mega Punch and not run modest Squirtles. Uh, and other nonsense, like having less super potions overall, having less money because you had to... Um, getting more XP early, you have to kill things for XP rather than catch them early. Which I didn't do this run really, but... Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite bad. So this is the reason why you actually have to catch Spiro. Like, no matter what, I would have camped for Spiro if I didn't get him first encounter there. Uh, earlier on, this, on the Cerulean split. Because, or on the, the Misty split. Because what's cool about Farfetch'd is that he learns Cut and Fly, and he only takes up one party spot to do that, and that is super valuable for this run. Besides the fact that he's just worth an extra Pokemon, like, right? Like, Farfetch'd is worth, uh, you know, plus, plus one pokes for the trade. So it's mandatory to catch Spear. You have to do it, no matter what. And the best places to do that are Route 3 and Route 4. Uh, route 3 and Route 4. So this, <laughs> this gym is so cancer. This, <laughs> this gym is the absolute worst. Trash cans and one of the worst fights in Pokemon speedrunning. You are always terrified to walk inside here. Oh, and there's spinners. In this gen. Those guys are spinners that you have to get past with a range of three. So I bag manip him there with the TM case set to select. Uh, this Pikachu is pretty troll. I am actually one speed short of being faster than this. Uh... And that quick attack is actually pretty troll too, because I'm at a range where my health is really ambiguous for like the strat I'm gonna do. It depends on like what the Raichu rolls, which strat I'm gonna do, and so like I'm kind of I'm kind of monk ass at this part in the run. Like I'm pretty, excuse me, I'm pretty scared. So you see me save for cans. Uh. I mean, it sucks to miss the 50-50 here, but also it's whatever because these cans are, like, fine. Nice turn frame. And now for the worst fight in the whole game. What's actually interesting about this fight here is that... Because I... Uh... Because I fought the guy and then saved. If I died to surge here, I actually could have continued. This run was so good. Okay, so one speed tie or one speed short of being uh, speed tied with this Vault Torp. So I was guaranteed to be slower there. And he hits me for 20 with Sonic Boom, always, of course. And then he could have Shockwave too, which would have been really bad. Uh, but what's interesting about this is that because I'm running Rash, very bad special defense. This Raichu does 40 to 48 damage with Shockwave. So, he double teams usually on turn one. We Water Pulse. And now we're going to Pulse again, hoping to get Torrent and not die, which we can't. And you see, he actually, he actually rolls 1 in 16, 48 damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and... And then he dies because of the torrent water pulse. 47-41 surge with both bugs and Pikachu. This, th at this point in the run, I don't think this will ever be topped. Like, this run is basically fucking perfect until this point. Like, you, it would be so hard to get a run that was better quality. than Like, pretty much impossible to get a run that was better quality than this one. At the... At the Surge split, I would say.
crazy run. How could it be better, chat asks? I mean, dude. Like, it... It can always be better, is the answer. But, like, I mean, dude, this run is so sick right now. Like, in Pokemon, it can always be better. Because the difference between great and perfect is so big. But... There's plenty of things if you want to nitpick that could have been better, but like this run was crazy. So really quickly there, I, I went to the bike and actually registered it and then used it from the menu. So now it's the, the bike is on my select key. Uh, which is important because you're going to see me actually get off the bike here with the select key. And now it's Mega Kick time. <laughs> it's actually this run. This run doesn't show off how bullshit Mega Kick is at all. Uh, but Mega Kick is bullshit. Like this is this is like the why Mega Kick why you have to use Mega Kick run, like because it just kills everything that doesn't die otherwise. But dude, Mega Kick Mega Kick is the worst. <laughs> okay so we're gonna do what's known as a run into bike here to avoid the spinner oh that was hot except for bonk in the wall oh my god that was like almost frame perfect it was like so good that it messed up my movement i think uh so basically the way it works is you run to the last tile that forces a spinner to look in the direction that you don't need to pass him in. And then with a few frames, you get on the bike and just pass. And he can't actually spin again in the direction to see you if you do it quickly enough by the time you pass him. But it's a little tricky to do, especially on the SP. Uh... Yeah, the spin and add is uh, guaranteed with torrent and a damage range without torrent. So more torrent things. Woo! Man, Gunner might be feeling the nerves a little bit. Two bonks in this section? You never see that. Uh, so something interesting here. So the power plant is below here, right? You normally actually have to enter this Pokemon Center so that you can fly here, so you can go to power plant later to catch Pikachu and something else. But I actually just get to skip walking inside because I already have Pikachu. My hands are doing better, but they need to be doing more better. Ooh, look at that sweet dark movement. Mm. Right into the trainer. Uh, Rock Tunnel is actually pretty hard in this game. I had to practice it a lot uh, when I did any percent for the first time, and I just applied that to round two. But yeah, it's quite uh, quite the endeavor to get really good at doing Rock Tunnel fast. Ooh, I remember this now. Okay, so, like, I don't have a revive here. Sometimes you have a revive because you have enough steps in Mount Moon to pick up the revive without ruining your repel, but this run I didn't, so I skipped it, which I think is correct. But um, I actually haven't gone back and checked this, but I'm, like, almost positive that Razor Leaf from Bulbasaur in the next fight kills me, and you have to use Mega Kick to kill him. And so at this point in the run, like, this run is so good that I am considering taking an extra menu to potion just to play around Mega Kick Miss into Razor Leaf on Bulbasaur. Um, but ultimately, I take no damage from this Slowpoke, and I'm pretty sure... I'm actually not sure about this still, because I don't have these damage ranges calc, because it, it doesn't come into play that often. But I'm pretty sure that Vine Whip is not going to kill me, and Razor Leaf will, and Poison Powder obviously won't um, from Bulbasaur. And he doesn't have AI. Like, he just uses random moves, this Bulbasaur. So I ultimately decide not to heal here, but it was like I was goddamn close to opening that menu and healing because I'm terrified at this point. Especially because my Mega Kick... I haven't missed any Mega Kicks this run. Like, it's got to happen, right? That's what you're thinking. But, like, you can't let that impact your decision-making. But we do get the, the perfect Martha. 
kick hit into kick hit. This fight is another fight where you just lose a minute because you miss mega kick and get status and stuff. So I had one bonk so far in Rock Tunnel. And I think I... Uh, you have to elixir here for the mega kicks. I think I actually bonk here as well. Yeah, sad boys. Good otherwise, though. Yes, 330 is possible. I will come back to this category if this time is ever beaten, by the way. But good luck. This category is bullshit. <laughs> I get the perfect guy here? Yes, dude. That one's hard. Even with the rocks, like, to try, I don't know. There's just something hard about bonking into that guy. <laughs> we all know PB is free. I will no I will probably not run this again unless someone beats my time and I'm definitely not running it again now. I've been running this game for 3 months and I was supposed to get record on a run that was like almost 2 months ago or something like a month and a half, 2 months ago. I'm just I'm done for sure for now. Which is why I'm here doing commentary. Well, actually oh bonk there. So 3 bonks. But they were all fast. I recovered fast from all of them. Sometimes you just get stuck on a wall. Oh, I actually could have water gummed here. Because I'm in torrent. They die. But it's whatever. It's the most insignificant time loss. <laughs> no. At least currently, this is by far my best run ever. Ooh, nice save running into that guy and getting off the bike perfectly. So I, I've gotten off the bike again, which means there's another run into bike coming. I think, I think I nailed it, if I remember correctly. But I might also have been retarded. We're going to find out, though. <laughs> so what's scary about this one, and why I call it the dance with darkness, is because... You have to do a run into bike on a spinner in the dark. And it's so scary to do this on good pace. I mean, you could also take the super slow pass and just bag manip him. But, like, I don't know. Then all your friends make fun of you. No respect from the community. Etc, etc. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was so good. Yes. <laughs> I messed this up so many times. Wow. Nice, perfect fucking movement. So good. <laughs> yeah, there is a fat. There actually is a faster way to pass that guy, but it's one tile specific. I'm I'll probably do that next time I, I run this game. And that is the last kick I have to hit. There is one more if you're not in torrent, but I'm but I am. Feels good, man. Feels so good. Okay, so here's where this run is absolutely bonkers. One extra step there. So three bonks of one extra step. Not bad at all. This run is ahead of my PB, and my PB is one of the fastest runs I've ever had, and it was so fast because I only caught one bug and I had no Pikachu and I had no extra catches. And I am ahead of that run with a bug and Pikachu. So this run is the best run of Fire Red Round 2 that has ever happened uh, to this point for sure. It's like not close. I'm, I, I don't think Xarian had any runs that were that were this good. But I'm, I'm not actually positive about that. 
But, I mean, it would just be so hard to have a run that was this good. This was three months of grinding and by far the best attempt I've had. So... You have to fight one of those trainers, by the way. And that guy gives more money. Because he's a gambler. So, this is... Gamer, yeah, sure. Uh, so, this is where... Uh, in my runs, a lot of the time... I am taking Eevee here for... I mean, it's like it's like one extra step or something, I think, to pick up Eevee here. And it gets him in your party right away. Since you are generally being forced to take a PC early in the game, which makes... Uh, to, to get room for Abra, you can also make room for Eevee when you take that PC. And getting Eevee in your party and evolving it early just saves time because you don't have to take him out of the PC later. Uh, and you see I don't increase my poke count there because Eevee is one of the... 16 Pokemon I get no matter what that I start with. But uh, what's cool about Eevee is that you can actually use him to weaken things that Blastoise is too strong to weaken in the in the mid game when you're catching them. Eevee is actually amazing for that. But this run doesn't do that because the main place you do that is Power Plant and we're skipping Power Plant this run because we already have Pikachu. Pick up some... So you have to get the coin case to be able to, like, have coins, right? So then you come in here and pick up the perfect combination of coins to where you don't have to spend money except on a big stack. You actually spend 10,000 Poke Dollars on 500 coins here. And the reason that's so worth it is because it lets you get Abra, um, which trades for Mr. Mime. And it lets you get Clefairy, which Moonstones into Clefable, which is also the Pokemon that you use to teach Strength to, because it only knows, uh, it doesn't know four moves, so you don't have to teach anything over uh, for Strength. So yeah, uh, very worth the investment of that money, and that's one of the reasons we're going to about to and already have picked up um, so many items to sell, because Ultra Balls ain't cheap, and neither is Clefairy <laughs> or twenty. 6x specials or whatever. Uh, yeah, and see, I, I, yeah, I did pick up a PP up uh, outside of Celadon. Woo! You see that? That guy's a spinner. And I was like, messed up the like schmoove movement <laughs> that you do to get past that guy. So my rhythm was, so I just like paused and reoriented myself. Because I was terrified. I'm, like, actually scared. That guy, if you take one extra step, you hit him. I'm, like, terrified. This run is too good right now. That's one of the problems with good fucking Pokemon runs, dude. It's, like, ugh, it's just... It's, it's too good. You know that you're... Any mistake is going to crush you. <laughs> But, you know, you just got to deal with it. The more experience you get with runs like these, the easier it is to deal with. But it's still, it's still never easy. Wow, Wave Warrior just asked, don't you need to pick up the TM below the sky during the world record? No, Wave Warrior, we routed that out. Dumbass. Are my hands still hurting? Uh, they are, but the rest is helping, I think, for sure. I mean, they don't hurt right now, like, at all. But if I tried to use them more, they probably would. Yeah. By the end of this grind, our character went full straight edge. 
doesn't sell Snatch for money anymore. That's what that TM is, by the way, TM Snatch. I swear I'm like, I don't know if it's my YouTube video or like what, but it like keeps skipping like, like just like a frame here and there. I don't know if the world record VOD is like that or if it's just this. Like you could see it on that health bar, it like skipped for a second. I don't know. Splice. <laughs> Only seeing the world record run must be nice. But yeah, these fights are whatever. There's one thing that matters here, which is the... Yeah, I haven't submitted this run yet. I'm going to do it after this. Uh, there's one thing that matters here, and... It's this Arbok is a 10 and 16 damage range with exactly 31 IV special attack. I think it's 7 with 10. Or uh, rather, 7 with 30 IV. 7 and 16. Uh, and this Arbok has Glare, Poison Sting, Poison. So, really nice to have good special attack and Torn and get the one hit there. So just barely get level 34 there and then use our two candies to get to Blastoise. The next two fights are Giovanni 1 and Rival 4. Lavender Rival, right? Because Boat, Bridge, Rival 1, yeah. Uh, so Blastoise is like a necessity for those two fights. And this is the best place to do it for sure. I mean, I guess it's, I don't know, for... The problem with Kangaskhan, if you're War Turtle, is that he outspeeds you. Oh, is this side Giovanni? Yeah, I bonk the tree, which messes up my movement. And then... And then... <laughs> I, I talk to Giovanni from the couch, which I didn't even know you could do that. So something interesting about this run is that if I remember correctly, I take like a bite here only to like 34. I want to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's funny because I remember like potioning to 54 in my in my brain from that run. So uh, what's interesting about this HP is that I am going to do... Oh, wow. I forgot about that. The Sylph Scope doesn't normally spawn on that tile. <laughs> it was different because I fought him from a different spot, right? Or maybe it does normally spawn there, but it feels different because I was coming from a different tile. I don't know. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to do a different strat for uh, Lavender Rival than I normally do. Or that you do most often, I guess. This strat requires spending a bunch of extra money. And also having at least two, ideally three, Mega Kicks. Uh... And what's important about it is that you have to commit to this strat now. Not that it's like that far off, but you have to commit now because you need to buy the items, the difference in items, which is an X accuracy and an X attack uh, and a guard spec. You need all three of those to do the strat on Lavender Rival, which, which is very expensive in comparison to the normal strat, which is just X special twice. But I go ahead and decide that because I have a lot of potions left and because my HP is kind of 
kind of not good for the X special strat with a, either a potion or not potioning. And I don't want to use my Orenberry on that fight that uh, I'm going to go ahead and commit to the to the alternate strat, which you'll see in a second. Uh, buy a bunch of stones there. Those stones are... Let's see. I buy a thunder, two fires, and a leaf. So the thunder is obviously for Pikachu and the... Uh, Firestones are for Flareon and sometimes Growlithe. And the Leafstone is for Oddish or Execute, depending on, or rather Gloom and Execute, depending on which or if or if both you catch. And so having those stones is obviously super, super good because it's just a poke you don't have to catch if you evolve. Did I swear this YouTube video is lagging? Like, I don't know. It's fine, though. It's, like, not that bad. I'm going to try to close out of some windows to see if it'll help. Maybe. I did have, like, a ton of chrome windows open. <laughs> so, teach fly to ding, and then I actually have to scroll all the way up, but it's fine. And potion to 54, which is, like, high. I actually could have been fine here with, uh, with 34. Healing to, healing to 54 there was actually kind of, uh, kind of troll maybe I don't know it was like playing really safe I was basically playing around Pidgeotto critting me with quick attack on the last turn of Lavender Rival no buying different X specials is because I'm doing a different spot a different strat for uh, for Lavender Rival the Mega Kick strat uh, so I'm just scrolling past my... Like, I went up to Potion, right? And now I need to go all the way down to Guard Spec for the Lavender Rival fight. And since I have to go past my stones anyway to get there, it's just best to do it in this menu to evolve uh, Raichu and Flareon. Now I'm going to switch Chiding to slot 2 because it's faster to have him in 2. Because it's only 1 input instead of 2. What battle was the mistake? It hasn't happened yet. I'll let you know. It is in Elite Four, though, if that's what you're here for. <laughs> Early Four, round one. Okay, so this strat is actually sick, and it's probably the strat we'd use more often if it didn't cost so much money to do. Lead with guard spec. This Pidgeotto has Sand Attack, which Guard Spec protects against. X Accuracy, because we're going to be using Kicks, because we're not in Torrent. And now here's where it gets sketchy, and I wish that I didn't Potion. Because I'm actually at 38 here, and then I get no Quick Attack. So I'm not in Torrent already, and uh, and if I hadn't, if I would be at 18 health, which is like perfectly fine if I didn't Potion. So it was kind of a waste, but it was also unlucky. Um, and also, yeah, it's worth noting that with X Accuracy, Mega Kick is a 99%. It has a 1% chance to miss. Okay, so here, protected by Guard Spec, and then Guard Spec runs out. So you actually uh, tank the Intimidate, and then Mega Kick kills normally, which is good. But here, I actually wanted to take damage to be in Torrent, so I led with Water Gun. Uh, not Bite, because I didn't want to flinch him. And then Mega Kick is the only thing that kills Growlithe here with no X specials um, without giving super effective tech, so it's worth the 1% chance to miss. And then Kadabra just dies to Torrent Pulse. Actually, I think he just dies to Pulse. Either way. But yeah. Good fight. Stalling there for Torrent is so important. It is so... Like, if you... 
if you don't water gun Gyarados there and don't take the hit, it's so, so bad. For the upcoming sections. Have to be in Torrent here. You notice we're not repelling because Ghastly is like overwhelmingly likely here. I actually have only seen not Ghastly, I think, twice. I saw Cubone once and Haunter once in in three months of running this game. Level 15 Ghastly is kind of nice here. And this is one of the reasons that catching your Spearow late is good. I talked about this earlier. Because this Chiding is nearly, if not guaranteed, to weaken this ghastly enough to make it a guaranteed catch with the nest ball a ball that increases uh how good it is with how low level the pokemon is so i'm pretty sure this goes from a 62 percent catch to a guaranteed catch just because you do that amount of damage which is so worth it um if obviously if the hypnosis hit i would have just chucked the ball but yeah And then we repel, because that's all we need here. And uh, water gun, some ghosts, and torrent. Nothing can go wrong until... Well, really, nothing can go wrong at all here. This is actually kind of like... You don't really think about it, but this is kind of just like mini nugget bridge. All these fights are completely free. Nothing can go wrong except quick attack on the last one, which is also kind of like Nugget Bridge. That was another item we used to pick up down there. It's an X accuracy at the bottom of this room, but it's so slow to get. Basically trade an Ultra Ball for not picking that up. I mean, yeah, this video, if you're looking to run this game, can function as, like, some level of tutorial, right? But I'm just trying to talk about, like, why we do things and why I did things in this run. It's about to... I mean, it's going to come more into play. Like, everything from now has just basically been an any percent run with some extra catches. But... It's about to get spicy. Best part of the run is coming up next. This Marowak does not die unless you're in Torrent. Sometimes you actually st stall on him to get Torrent if you're not in it. But generally you can be in Torrent here unless you are like full HP leaving Surge or something. Sometimes you can't take enough damage, which is funny because this run I was literally at one health and had to heal after Surge. Also, I unironically think that closing all those Chrome windows actually stopped the YouTube video from lagging, which is retarded because my computer should not have trouble with it, but whatever. Also, dolphin sound, god dang it. Um, this Golbat does not die if you're not in Torrent. Twelve times, surely that's fine. <laughs> surely. Uh, I guess this Drowsy, you have to bite it if you're not in Torrent. So Pulse saves the super effective text boxes. And super effective... Uh, super effective text boxes waste like a full second or something in this game. Pretty slow. So it looks like I'm losing time to PB and Record, but I evolved Pikachu and Flareon here, which is why...
Those runs do not do that, or at least Pikachu anyway. Record doesn't evolve Pikachu or Flare on there. Record doesn't even have Eevee yet. So like, I'm literally, I already invested like a minute and a half that Record hasn't invested yet into the run that he has to at some point. So this Rattata and Raticate both have Quick Attack, and my HP is, like, um, perfect right now, basically, for Koga's gem. So I really don't want to get Quick Attack, but at the same time, if I do, it's uh, I should be able to Orin Berry it. I actually think exactly one Quick Attack would have been bad there. 28 to 33. No, it would have been okay. It wouldn't have been good, but it would have been okay on average because my defense is so good this run. I'm only taking... Tw I don't even need to check. It's funny. I have all these memorized now. <laughs> I used to have to check every run. 28 to 33, I believe, from uh, from Weezing Sludge. Which is important because you want to be in Torrent and tank that move. That's very important. So now it is time. <laughs> it is time. For the best part in the whole run. And why one of the reasons this run is so stupid. <laughs> Safari Zone. <laughs> and Arcadius is here right on time. Uh, so after the Snorlax, there's going to be a bunch of... It's actually scary, dude. The Biker Gang. <laughs> there's going to be uh, a Biker Gang. And I'm going to do this... Uh, the pause buffer trick where you pause right in front of a spinner and open the menu so they can't spin for 32 frames and then the movement that comes after i think takes 31 frames if you do it perfectly so to get past this guy perfectly you have to do boo just a little boo right around him perfectly uh to guarantee the pass so that part is always scary on record pace And chat always freaks out about picking up these items, but it's really not that hard if you practice. But it, but it is satisfying. It is satisfying. To do it. For sure. So another bit of a route change here is that uh, I've invested more money into items, uh, X items, and less money into picking up items and selling TMs than normal. Um, so I'm only going to buy 11 Ultra Balls and one Max Repel. Because I noticed that, like, on almost every run, I was wanting to buy more Max Repels at a later Mart. And um, since I was buying two stacks anyway, I could just buy one here and then buy more later. Which I think is right. And you have to leave enough money to get in Safari And You actually do have to have the $500 to get in there. There was one run where I had, like, 496 and I was really mad. Okay, Safari Zone. So, Safari Balls are great balls. <laughs> uh, and you can't weaken anything. The only thing you can do is Rock and Bait. Rock doubles the base catch rate and doubles the base flea rate. But it only doubles the base flea rate starting on this turn. So, they're not more likely to run instantly, which makes Rock really good on certain things. Uh, this Execute actually got not angry after the first turn. Which was unfortunate because then i had to rock again so it went rock ball rock ball run which is really bad because execute is worth two pokemon because it leaves stones to executor and so that was not a good start not terrible though you don't always expect to catch execute it's not that likely to catch but you really want it there's really one other place to get it and it's pretty unlikely so i pick up the leaf stone uh in case i get both gloom and execute which happens like reasonably often and you need to have both if you get them both See Nidoran here. Nidoran is actually worth four Pokemon. Trades for female Nidoran, candies to Nidorina, stones to Nidoqueen. And it's 50% to get in the ball. So Nidoran is like the staple. You always need at least one Nidoran, I would say. Because it's just so worth it. Um, so we get two breakouts and then run. So Nidoran is 18% to run per turn and 50% to get in the ball, roughly. And so that was very unlucky. <laughs> uh, execute and Nido running there was so bad. But then we get one of the Holy Grail encounters, female Nidoran. 5% to encounter this baby. Uh, 
and it saves the trade from male Nidoran to female Nidoran, assuming that you get male Nidoran also. So it saves like 40 seconds or something, maybe even more. Probably more to get that. So really sick. I was super scared, but then I got that. So we're good to go on that. Uh, see Rhyhorn here? Rhyhorn is worth catching after a rock, but it's like just barely worth it. Uh, so with the fact that he ran instantly, I'm not even mad about because he control you like really hard. And now it's time for zone three. So what's interesting about zone three is that zone three has like a mixture of the other zones. It has uh, all the Nidos and uh, Doduo, Venonat uh, are the two ones. So if you do, so when I go to zone three, when I come like out of my way to come here, I do I do it if I need Venonat and at least one Nido basically. So this Nidorino is actually, I don't know how likely he is to run on this turn, but it's pretty freaking likely. Pretty, pretty likely. I don't, I don't know that I have seen too many Nidorinos not run on the second turn, but getting, getting the Nidorino here is such a big swing over him running on that turn and us catching him on the next turn. Dude, it is so crazy because Nidorino saves the evolve from Nidoran to Nidorino uh, and leaves another rare candy for a different Pokemon because we'll be catching Pokemon that we'll use a rare candy on. Like, for example, level 31 Geodude. If you use a rare candy on that, it becomes Graveler. So catching it is worth two Pokemon and you have five candies to throw around to Pokes that you catch. Uh, getting Doduo there was good. I actually wonder what I'd do here. Probably stay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to stay here, right? Yeah, because I, I need Venonat or Nidoran or Execute. And all of those are good encounters here. And normally level 22 Nidoran is uh, not ideal because it learns Helping Hand when you try to rare candy it, which is slow. But I don't have to evolve this Nidoran because I already have a Nidorino. So I actually caught the three optimal Nidos. Male Nido, female Nido, and Nidorino. I've never had a run that caught all three, I'm pretty sure, until now. And so now we're done. I'm, uh, there's still Pokemon I can run into here. Rhyhorn and Paris. And Execute. Nice bonk. Um, but I, like, don't need them. So I actually just decide to leave here. And this was an interesting decision. I guess Nidorina is also faster, yeah. This was an interesting decision, I think, to leave here. But I think it was correct looking back. Because the problem with the Pokes that are remaining is that... They're not easy to catch. Like, Execute and Rhyhorn are 40% of the encounters that I want, and those Pokemon are not easy to catch. And I'm already so far ahead, and I have so much time banked now because Record has to trade for, for female Nidoran, and it also has to candy and evolve into Nidorino. Um, and I already have both of those. So... I think leaving there was correct. Uh, something else that's good about leaving is that, um, like I said, you can catch Execute later in the islands. It's only 5%, but I also need Venonat on the islands too. So that's 15% to get an encounter that's worth two Pokemon that I can catch in Safari Zone elsewhere. And uh, when you catch them on the islands, you can weaken them and, and use an Ultra Ball. So I don't know. <sighs> Safari Zone is like, necessary but you don't want to like over farm safari i think depending on what's left like obviously if you need nidoran you need nidoran there's nothing you can do because it's worth four pokemon but uh i think i think the safari was played perfectly i think i think i made the correct decisions this run in safari zone it was actually crazy like this the safari zone at this point it's like kind of bad ish because I'm not going to power plant this run and I have no extra catches early so my poke count is actually very low for this point in the run um but this is a run where I'm thinking like I'm probably going to do some kind of backup catch this run maybe if I get like standardish luck on the on the on what's to come uh and so I'm trying to think about what that might be I have a lot of rare candies in the bank right now I think I only have one female Nidoran to use a candy on at this point so that means i have four left so that's four pokes from candies uh i still have venonat and execute to catch i haven't caught pidgey 
or Ratata this run either, which a lot of times you catch early. Um, but anyway, this is one of the scariest fights in the whole run. This fight sucks. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that defense and HP are such important stats. Because for Koga, I need to be at a range where I both tank Sludge and am in Torrent. And the, the main reason this fight sucks is because this Muck doesn't die to X special plus Torrent Surf. It's like really close, but it doesn't quite die. So it's worth it to just kill the Muck with two turns and then go for the range on Weezing. So Weezing, I believe, with a uh, good special attack plus nature, level 40, the EVs we have, etc., is 41% to die to one Surf, including critical. And if you miss the range, then um, you actually, I'm like actually guaranteed to win here if I miss the range, as long as he doesn't poison me. And if he poisons me, then it's fucked. But uh, just hit the 41% range. This is super big. Super huge swing over dying here, which happens like a lot of the time. We have a revive if we die, but it's like, okay. But yeah, that was like huge. I mean, it's you're more likely to survive if you surf than if you bite. Because if you miss the range with surf, then you just do bite surf. And you're guaranteed to win from there. And so you're 41% to save yourself from a death if you surf. And 30% if you bite. Though Bite is maybe faster on average, but less top end. I don't know. I think Surf is worth it. So this is the point in the run right here where you need to have Abra in your party, right? And you notice before when I, uh, in Cerulean, where I made room for Abra that I I said that, you know, when we come back to Pewter later, we need to have Abra in our party. And I have not used a PC since then. Yes, he can heal twice. Bite skips the heal range. Is why you would bite. So, uh, we always do Diglett here. You can only encounter Diglett and Dugtrio, and you have to come here to trade for Mr. Mymon. That was a fast encounter. Oh, my God. That never happens. Um, and Diglett is 78% to get in the ball with Ultra Ball, so it's just, like, one of the Pokemon you always catch. And then trade for Mr. Mime from Abra. And this, uh, you know, this is where you have to do this. Oh, and I guess, okay, I guess you could, you're, you're probably wondering, like, okay, well, why can't you just, you know, when you do a PC later, get Abra and then come here later, um, which you could do. But the problem is, is that by the time you go to Cinnabar, you need to have the old Amber that you pick up in Pewter in, in your inventory already. So, and I'm going to Cinnabar next, which means I I can only come to Peter once. So I have to get the old Amber, and then I have to come here, which means I have to have in my Abra in my party from here on. Which is annoying, because part of this route that I was excited about was like, oh, I won't have to have Abra in my party anymore, because we don't have to teleport on this route. Well, you actually still need Abra in your party at the same time, which is stupid. So this is where I would normally fly to Power Plant to go catch Pikachu and either Voltorb or Magnemite, sometimes both if you get them first, which is, like, good. But, um... This run, we already have Pikachu, so we're just skipping. So we're, like, low on pokes, but fast Safari Zone. Low on pokes, but fast early game. Low on pokes, but no uh, power plant. So, like, this run is super sick and fast, but, like, it is relying on its late game uh, luck somewhat, for sure. Dude, this run is literally insane, though, at this point. Like, oh, my God. This is, yeah, I mean, I'll point it out when it happens, but this is probably, like, the fastest playing time ever. Definitely with this poke count, it's the fastest playing time ever. It's, like, so crazy. Ooh. 
And this is why we need the one max repel. You generally get an encounter uh, from Tentacle there, and then you just repel down the mansion. Because you don't need the whole mansion. You just need a little bit of it to get what you need. Why no gold splits? Because I never, I didn't have any segments that were my fastest segment ever. Why does the game have no sound? Because then you'd hear me talking twice. Save a turn frame by stepping down there, but it's kind of scary because that scientist can see you. <laughs> but you know. This is troll, what I do here. I could have just gone there. He was It was impossible for him to hit me from there. I could have just gone right. But I was, like, scared. <laughs> okay, so. Coughing is good. 30% to encounter coughing here. Coughing and Raticate are the common encounters. And then there's also Grimer and... Um, Growlithe and Raticate and Ratata and Weezing. Weezing you don't catch because it's too hard to catch. But uh, you see, I talked about before why this Great Ball was good. It's good as a backup for Ghastly. Ditto. Oh, yeah. Oh, ditto. Sorry. Um, it's good as a backup for Ghastly, but if you keep it, then it's just an extra Ultra Ball. Because I would normally Ultra Ball Coughing there because uh, cause Pokeball is bad because it's only 78% and then he can self-destruct. But... Uh, But Great Ball is guaranteed, so it's just an extra Ultra Ball. So this is sick. This Grimer is only 5% here. And this Grimer kind of made up for uh, for no Power Plant encounter, I guess. In a way. Though I wound up actually skipping uh, Raticate anyway here. So at this point, there is Raticate, Raditai, and Growlithe, and Ditto left to me. So there's a 60% chance that I get a useful encounter here. And so I actually decide to camp here for a second because it's, it's so likely that I get an encounter that I want, and I actually need more pokes. So I actually get the best one. 15% to encounter this. Growlithe, which stones, Firestones, into Arcanine. This was a sick encounter. Um... Because if I got Raticate here, I would have had to leave. But I got Growlithe instead, which is worth two. Um, so right here is actually... A, I was actually sweating this decision so hard. I have Raticate, Ratata, and Ditto remaining to me. So it's 45% to good, get a good encounter. But Raticate is kind of troll to catch sometimes because it has an Orin Berry. And like its catch rate isn't great. And then 45% isn't like insane or anything. And I'm pretty sure that I might have to do some kind of backup strat. Um, catch area later anyway. So I actually just make the official decision to take the no wasted encounters split and just go into Blaine. I'm still not 100% sure that this was correct. Um, but based on what happened in the, in the rest of the run, I think it was reasonable. Because Raticate, like Raticate isn't even like a useful 5%, right? Because like you can get Raticate later. It's whatever. So I don't know. Pretty close play there. With this exact poke count, though, I don't know. This was close. Like, obviously, it feels kind of maybe because we don't get to see what happened. But there's a world where I try to camp there and have to camp for, like, four encounters, and then it sucks. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. This one's tough. And this is kind of why this category is cool, right? Because, like, I'm still not sure, looking back at that, that that was the correct decision. Well, I didn't end Safari early. That's not... That's That, that was correct, 100%. That was not. But because we didn't catch that much in Safari, it was, like, maybe. But, I mean, we're talking about a one-poke difference here. So... Because I was never camping for two... Close play. Arguably, I would say it was it was it was probably worth it to stay. But Raticate, I don't know. Like Raticate's just annoying. Raticate's trolled me so many times.
I'm actually speed tied with Rapid Ash here. I didn't have to X speed, but it wound up working out. Rapid Ash is troll, it has bounce. Um, bounce, well, bounce is like fly that paralyzes, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. So, it cannot be understated, like, I mean, okay, I'm at 38 pokes right now, though I have four candy pokes remaining to me, so that's like part of the reason why I'm lower on pokes, but like, it cannot be understated how insane like, a sub-140 Blaine is. Like, sub-140 Blaine is so, so fast. Like, I, I, I can't even believe this run happened to this point. Yeah, it would not be fun to run against these splits. Like, I'm literally saving five minutes on my PB. There. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's part of the, like, not camping mansion there when it wasn't like amazing to do so well if the bad thing that happened on islands didn't happen then islands actually would have been the peak of this run i think no you can't escape rip out okay so here's one of two dumb things i do this run i'm like I'm, like, looking at my poke count, like, really hard here and, like, trying to figure out. And then I, like, I'm just mashing. And then I press B. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's, so like, 12 seconds. 13. 14. Oh, no, wait. 15. He had to walk a little bit. It's, like, 15 seconds. Ish. But I lost to that. I said no. Well, he still has to walk you over a little bit. And, like, the, the dialogue doesn't end instantly when you say yes. So it's 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 closer to 15. But, yeah, it's, it's whatever. Hmm, I wonder if I should go P at the same point that I would normally P, just for the means. <laughs> oh, I mean, not me, I mean. Mewtwo is whatever. I always leave my mic on. My mic doesn't pick it up. Yeah, the layout's going to change for yellow, but I mean, it has to. Nugget bridge round three. Well, kind of. I mean, these fights, well, the last fight sucks way more than that. All right. Well, since I usually go to the bathroom here when I'm uh, when I'm doing my world record attempts anyway, because you just smash A, except for the rain dance stage, I guess I'll use the restroom while this two or three fights plays. <laughs>
should have turned the sound on, I guess. <gasps> oh my god, I sat down at the exact same time. Literally the exact same time <laughs> that I sat down in record. <laughs> like, actually perfect. No, I actually, <laughs> I actually left a bit earlier than I did in record stuff. So this fight is troll. I hate this fight. It's the worst. You have to lead spec here if you're not in torrent because Weezing doesn't die. Uh, ideally, it self-destructs and then you get the range on Muck. Uh, instead, we get poisoned from Sludge, which is troll. <laughs> Time for the worst mistake of the run. Yeah, sure. I guess. Except not really. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, because I'm poisoned in low HP and need to heal for the next catch sections, I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and full restore here if I had to guess what I did. And I'm like thinking here too, like, okay, you just scroll to the bottom of your inventory. Don't forget to sell. And then I also didn't teach Blizzard yet, which you normally do in the last split, but it doesn't matter when, when you do it. Just want to do it while you're in the menu. Yeah, I do something. <laughs> I, I make a very minor mistake here where I press buy instead of pressing sell. And I realize it instantly. Because <laughs> you have to sell the protein and the carbos to afford everything you need here because you're buying so many ultra balls and hyper potions. So 13, 2, and then 3. And it's faster to buy the 3 and then press right to buy 6 instantly. Yeah. Blaine Split was insane because I skipped Power Plant and got no useless encounters. Okay, so this section is actually, like, pretty important. There's a lot of stuff I really want and need here. So, me uh, so Meowth is here. Oddish is here. Pidgey, which I don't have yet. Um, this Oddish is actually, like, a really insane Pokemon, right? Because if you don't find Gloom, which, like, doesn't happen all the time, then Oddish rare candies into Gloom, and then Leaf Stones into uh, Vileplume. So, this Oddish is worth three pokes right away, and I have four candies remaining to me. Um... Critting Hypno and talking to Blaine twice cost 115. Uh, no. Or talking to Blaine twice. That cost more like... I would say close to 130. Sub 140 Blaine's really insane. Pidgey, Pidgey in one ball, Oddish in one ball there is really, really good. Um... But the poke that I, like, really want to see either here or in the next area is Venonat. Uh... No, we're not blocking it. We're not blocking it. It hasn't happened yet. This fight's pretty troll. This stupid Bulbasaur and Ivysaur and everything has random AI. So they have, what, Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, Sweet Scent, and Razor Leaf, I think. And uh, so Mega Kick is 99% to hit after X Accuracy, but Blizzard is only 93%. And happens. And happens. So because they have random AI, you don't want to... Actually, they might, they might have the status AI. I don't even know. Um... So it may have technically been a mistake to heal to not heal that off. But it was one poison tick and I just wasn't worried about it. It's like whatever, just don't get stats again. The HP doesn't matter. Just heal out of the fight. So Venonat is 10% here and in the forest, and Execute is 5% only in the forest. And the reason Venonat is so good is because he trades for Tangela in the same place that you trade Raichu. So really want to see Venonat 
and on the last tile <laughs> of that area, actually get the Venonat. Super, 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 super happy to see Venonat here. Like, this was a huge deal, honestly. I got Oddish, Pidgey, and Venonat in three encounters, all first ball. This was, like, really sick. It's like, you say the run peaks at Blaine, but really? Really? It peaks, like, here. Like, this is the point where the run is, like, insane. Is right when I encounter this Venonat. Like, at God. Like, having a better one hour, 50 minutes of round two is, like, impossible. I don't even remember. I think this is Gloom. Yeah. So Gloom is good. It's, I mean, I have a lot of candies still, so it's like not as good as it normally is, but like it's still faster to catch something than it is to evolve it once you've encountered it for sure. This is actually uh, pretty troll though. 62% to get in the ball from there. You can actually guarantee this catch by biting again, but the problem is, is that Gloom has Stun Spore and Moonlight which heals it and or, or statuses you. And so, like, I think it's better to just throw the ball because of the, the upside of not giving Gloom the next turn. Also, you can crit it. But second ball was good. Like, this was this was completely fine. Have, have plenty of balls because I haven't had any breakouts yet on Ultra Balls. Hypno... That was our first useless encounter. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Actually, was that our first useless encounter of the entire run? I mean, Route 1 and Forest, I guess. Yeah. But... But, yeah. I mean, like, super low. Yeah, weakening the really high level Hypnos is Cancer, though. Venomoth was a great encounter, though, here. Like, that was huge, honestly. And I actually make a, a little mistake here. Uh, I should have healed off that Paralysis for sure, because the encounter that I wanted to see the most was Pidgeotto. And I, you see me actually pause there for a second, because I'm like, shit, I fucked up. Because uh, this Pidgeotto has Whirlwind. That's the problem. 1 in 4 to Whirlwind, and if it Whirlwinds you, then, uh, then, you know, it, it effectively is run. So. But yeah, got him anyway. <laughs> that would have triggered me. So now I heal it. And what's actually, <laughs> okay, so this, this Venonat is not one of the 16 Pokemon that you start the run with always catching, right? And you might be wondering why, because you have to do this as part of the, as part of the game, right? Or did I say, I meant Hypno. And that's why, is because I crit Hypno and like this. I mean, yeah, you lose one poke, and it's kind of unlikely to get in the ball, and it's like... But this crit, and you'll see why later, wound up losing me so much time. <laughs> like, so much time. Wow, can you believe it? One of my... One of my real-life friends has just called me. And you know why? Because he thinks that I don't stream on Sunday. Like every other person in this universe, even though I've streamed Sunday since the beginning of time. This Oddish was like, whatever. Wasn't expecting to get a good encounter here. So, you generally go to this bush here. This is like 
technically optional, but you like almost come here every time because there is a a really sick poke that you can catch here, and that is Ponypa. Yeah, that's pretty troll. Fear of breaking out. Dude, it's literally crazy. Like, at the, like, from Hypno, like, Hypno is, like, the, the middle of this run. And, like, on either side of the Hypno, there's, like, perfect luck and, like, absolutely miserable luck. And, oh my god. So, Firo Firo is kind of troll, but there's also Spiro here, which was another bad encounter. So, it's like, whatever. It's fine. And what I'm farming for here is anything good. So, Geodude, Meowth. Uh, getting Persian here was also really sick, honestly. So, I'm like thinking about what to do here. Like, I don't know what to do. Because I want to farm for Ponyta after this. I could I could have pulsed here, but I don't want to die. Because I was going to farm for Ponyta after. So I heal first and then surf. So this was actually a great encounter. Venonat, Persian. Like, honestly, these... I, like, I critting the Hypno was bad. But, like, these islands were pretty lucky. Venonat, Persian, and uh, and Venomoth, and like the late Pidgeotto were pretty lucky, honestly. Because it's hard to get those pokes. I mean, you can Meowth to Candy, right? But anyway, so we got Firo, Persian, and level 34 Ponyta in three, po or in sorry, in four encounters here. So this was a very good Ponyta bush. And this was so crazy. I thought this thing was dead for sure. For sure. And I was going to cry. Because Ponyta's worth three Pokemon. Trades to Seal, evolves to Dugong with a rare candy. And my head is like... Is like swimming at this point. Because I'm like so invested into this run. At this point. Also, he could have takedowned and killed himself, by the way. Just saying. Like, that would have... That would have been the most troll. It wasn't an orgasm, dude. I almost fainted, bro. It was not a it was not a pleasant thing. I do have the same file. Okay, so here's the worst mistake in the whole run. And you, as you can see, Flareon and and Raichu are like the same color. Okay, in my defense, and I like can't find my Blastoise. There it is. And then I go up here to Raichu because I think it's Flareon and put Raichu in the PC. And I actually need Raichu in my party right now. And I've never made this mistake on any run ever. And it actually is so sad. But it happens, dude. It happens. <laughs> it happens. How much time lost? Well, we're about to find out. I was still recovering for Ponyta. Yeah, that's exactly why it happened. Honestly. Like, like no trolls. Alright, 158.26. That's when we enter. Oh my god, this mistake was so costly. <laughs> 20 seconds. Twenty seconds lost, uh, and the fade out. No, it's more like twenty-three, actually. Pretty rough. Twenty-three plus fifteen. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, it's saying no to Bill. Yeah, sure, sure. Whatever. Those were two separate mistakes, Jay. But yes. 
That is very bad. But like, it doesn't even bother me. Honestly, it's like whatever. It's the stupidest mistake. Like, it's fine. <laughs> there is no task for this category. I mean, yeah, it's, you can definitely say, oh, if you didn't crit the Hypno, or oh, if you didn't make that mistake, but, like, you know, then the RNG changes and you just die. Or the RNG changes and we get an actually round good Elite Four round one and get a 3.9. Yeah, so this is why you have to have Abra slash Old Amber slash take the PC and get all these Pokemon and stuff. Because uh, you're doing all these trades and fossil giving and stuff in this place. This place is a gold mine. It's worth noting that po the, the I, I talked about this before, but the level you trade a Pokemon at is the level you receive it at. So catching level thir 34 Ponyta makes the seal a candyable Pokemon to Dugong. Whereas if you catch the lower level Ponyta, it's not. You have to step out of the room there to reset the fossil guy. No, I literally don't want to know if there's a lab PC. <laughs> Even if there was, it wouldn't have been, like, particularly faster. Well, if it's in the second room, it's not even faster, then. But, yeah. Okay. So, I... What did I take out? I took the trade Pokemon out, and I left the bug in my party from... Uh, early game. Like, that bug has been in my party the whole run. Because it's just faster to leave it there since you need it the next time. Or, like, you don't... You never need as many party slots as it as it takes here. Yeah, I... Yeah, I do something... I do something... I've never actually done this before. How does it actually happen? Yeah, that was so weird that it didn't... And then this guy... I could have gotten hit there. I tried to press pause. Like, I'm just literally falling apart at this point. But honestly, that was kind of like the the end of it, right there. Like I I, I like realize, okay, dude, get your sh shit together. Like, come on, after that. Oh no, that's the end of it. <laughs> Going down to <laughs> instead of up. My hands were. I was in a lot of pain for sure at this point for sure. And there was still much more to go. So what are my candy pokes right now? I have Nidoran and Seal. Is there anything else? Oddish. No, I caught Gloom. Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto. Yeah, so I have three right now. So I still have two candy pokes left to go. And I'm at 52 pokes right now, which puts me at 54. And I haven't caught Rattata. And I haven't caught Mankey or Ekans. I have caught Firo, and I don't have Psyduck. So at this point in the run, I'm thinking, okay, I'm catching Rattata. I'm catching Psyduck for sure. I have two candy evolutions, which are worth two pokes. And I'm going to catch either Mankey or Ekans, whichever one I see first. So that's five pokes. I'm at 52. 
So that means I'm at 57 with the things I'm definitely going to catch. So where am I getting the other three pokes is what I'm thinking right now as I switch train my Weedle to get three pokes from it. Um, from its evolutions. Uh, and the answer to this question is... I don't know. <laughs> if it was two exactly then I definitely would have done Victory Road. If it was four, then I definitely would have fished. If it was one, then I probably would have picked up the candy this run, actually. Maybe. I don't know. I probably just would have done Victory Road, actually, in that case. But but there, none of the backup areas seem particularly enticing at this point, either, because of what I've caught already. So, like, at this point, I really don't know what I'm gonna what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and so ultimately I decide that I'm just going to do, cause I like, you don't catch any other Pokemon for this until the end, until route 23 and victory road, unless you do some sort of backup, uh, n very near the end. So I'm, I'm wondering to myself, like, yeah, I'm literally reading it right now. How dumb chat is being so power plant then that's the first thing I see. So we're going to go to power plant, right? Yeah, bro. We're going to go to. 40 seconds out of our way to go catch one thing. Okay. God, chat was... Chat's like, Waterstone the Poly World. Or something. Uh, I had to stop reading, like, completely at that point. I'm talking about 40 seconds of travel, Leo. That's true. I literally couldn't even get to Power Plant because I didn't take the center to fly there. Anyway, I ultimately decided that it was probably going to suck, and I was some some of the time I was going to have to catch Onyx, but like whatever, you know, just just deal with it. Um, I'm so far ahead, and I have tons of Ultra Balls right now, like or at least more than usual. So because I, I didn't even catch Hypno, and nothing really had broke out except what one Fero and one Gloom, I think. So I was like, okay, I'll. I'll, I'll just catch the candy pokes in Victory Road. And hope for not... Oh, there it is. Wesley, since the beginning of time, since the inception of when you've known me and every single stream schedule I've ever had, I stream on Sunday, always and forever. I'm so tired of telling you and my family this. Fuck you. <sighs> because, because. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time. Uh, so, yeah, this is the second fight where we switch train uh, Weedle, and then I'm going to switch Blastoise back to the front after the evolve. This is why the bugs are so useful, because for just a little bit of XP investment, you get two evolves from them. And uh, Giovanni time. This fight is generally fine, but sometimes it's troll because Kangaskhan has a range and has fake out and Fiorino can poison you or Fury attack times five or whatever. And you actually want to get Torrent for Sabrina or at least a range where Sabrina can give you Torrent for Erica. Is that the lead spec because I'm not in Torrent? And I get Horn attack, which is like nice there, I would say. It's probably the best thing that can happen. Because now I get Torrent for Fake Out, or I get Torrent from Sabrina. Perfect fishing would have been faster than the Victory Road that I got. But I think fishing is just bad. 
in almost all cases. Fake out would have been perfect here. I've would gotten Torrent for Sabrina and I would have hit this range. But uh, miss range into rage is fine too. It's like the same thing basically. So this is another PC that you always take because uh, you're doing like trade sections here uh, and you're full of like Pokemon that you've already traded for, right? So since you generally do the Nito male to female trade here, I actually pick up the male Nito here and I'm like, oh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> already have female Nito and Nidorino. Not used to having that, but at least I noticed in time. It's basically all your Moonstone pokes, and then went all the way around to get to the second bug. Which I will also use for swap training in Giovanni's gym. So two bugs worth six pokes, and two switches. Pretty hot. So this friend had to use quite a few, like, sometimes X specials. Giovanni, Sabrina, uh, Paxton, the wheezing muck guy on the biker on the islands. Like, you have quite a few extra X specials to throw around, but this friend had to use, like, all of them, which is going to wind up mattering a whole lot later. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I got rage from the Kangaskhan, so I actually didn't have to spec here, but for all the other ones I did. You can't escape rip in every gen. Leaf Green and Fire Red are one category. So I actually delayed keeping or like putting black glasses on to keep my Persian very active just in case this confused me because it's so bad to get confused here with certain HPs or like all HPs really. Assuming you don't spec. But I did, so it actually would have been fine here but I could have known that ahead of time, so. You can use black glasses to get a 13 and 16 damage range on Growlithe in the Sylph Rival fight, which saves a super effective box, and you can use it to get a 15 and 16 range on Giovanni's Rhyhornet plus one, which is a super effective box as well. So it's like minor, but it does save time. This is where you would normally pick up Eevee if you didn't pick it up early because you had the party space for it. Uh, and World Record picks it up there, so I'm going to save time there. And I also, you would normally trade male for female Nidoran in there, but I didn't have to do that because I caught both of them. So, like, huge time save here over Record. Yep, this fight is, uh, I mean, these two Erica fights are just bite, and then Erica herself is actually really, really dumb, because it's so likely to go well, but <laughs> when it doesn't, it doesn't. And you'll see why, because I'm going to save, a, like, a ton of time on PB. Even though I think PB, PB either already had Eevee or already had the trade, one or the other. And I'm still going to save, like, a ton of time because PB gets the bad Erica fight where you miss the range and die. Though I actually am pretty sure I would have tanked Giga Drain here even if I missed the Vile Plume range. So 
So Erica is the reason you want to be in Torrent so badly is uh, for for Sabrina, so you can skip the X spec. But uh, for this fight, you actually have to Blizzard Victory Bell if you're not in Torrent, and this is guaranteed to kill instead of only seventy percent to kill. Then you bite Tangela, that just dies. But then the the Vile Plume is the problem because Vile Plume is thirteen and sixteen to die to Torrent Surf, and plus crit chance. So, if you miss this range, it will stun Spore if it doesn't kill with Giga Drain, and then she'll heal, and then you get a rebuy on the range. But if, you, if you're if you dead to Giga Drain, you just die, and then you have to revive, and then you're not in Torrent, so you have to Blizzard, and then you miss the Blizzard, and then you're stun Spore, and you actually want to, like, end your life. But yeah, time save. I saved a minute 50 on PB, and what, like, over a minute and a half on record because of the Nito and, the, and having Eevee early. I don't need to mention such a thing. Yeah, this time is great. And the, th and the reason this time is good, like, it's it, and it's as good as it seems too, right? Because I have 52 pokes, and Record had 54, but Record had four candy pokes already used, or, like, claimed. So he really, so I really have 53, assuming I catch the two candy pokes, which I'm going to. So I'm only one poke behind Record right now. Um... With fewer evolves because I already have Nidorino. And I am 509 ahead. So yeah, I think he I think he actually has already done one of his bugs of evol bug evolves, so we're actually tied there. But yeah. Like so ahead right now. Uh, so it just makes sense to do all this evolving here, right? Because you gotta, you have to take the PC to get Clefairy in your party for strength anyway. So you just get all these Candy and Moonstone pokes done at the same time. And having Nido King in, in your party is good for Psyduck. And I had already decided not to fish at this point, but I was considering it during the Silph Coast split and stuff, whether I would fish or not. And I, I think I was, it was correct not to, but. Candy Clefairy is something I haven't done in, since the beginning. It's been months. Like, actually over two months, I think, since I did that. God, these evolve sections take forever. <laughs> but it's so worth it. <laughs> this friend is actually, like... The route wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, a lot of things about it are really good. It's a hard category to optimize. Um, I already modded him. Yeah, pick up the candy behind the strength boulder. That's why you like need the strength there, because it's just an extra candy that you, you know, like you're in that room anyway. And then swap train on these two fights for the bugs. And Two free evolves from that again. This gym is free, but these Machokes are damage ranges. I actually don't know what they are. It seems very likely to kill, but they are damage ranges. And they can actually do a bunch of damage to you, too. Um, yeah, I mean, I always keep my attempt counters. 
That's why I have 19,000 attempts in yellow. But yeah. I don't know if there's anything I forgot to mention at this point, but... These fights are free. Even Giovanni is, like, unlosable because they all die. This is the calm before the storm that is Route 23 and Victory Road. My consistently least lucky catch sections, for sure. A few ranges. There's, well, the Machokes are damage ranges, but I said that. And nothing else is a range. If you use the right moves. <laughs> anyway. Good world record. Oh, that was actually really annoying. Getting Bone Meringue here was pretty unlucky. Forced me to heal. And lacking that healing item actually mattered later. It's pretty dumb, actually. I mean, it's, it's d what's really dumb is that it mattered in the end. But it did. <laughs> and remember, keep that hypno that we crit in the back of your mind moving forward here Yep, this part's pretty resident sleeper, but <laughs> the le I mean, something stupid still happened, imagine that. Well, I mean, I would have crit the Hypno. Yes, Gem Freak, and that's, that's the nonsense part of this run, and it should have been so much better than than it should have than it was because so many of the the things that happened mid game wound up losing me so much time later on and like it's actually it's actually kind of tragic um but i mean if there was any run that could handle all the nonsense that's to come it's this one i guess which is good i got the record even though it was a little not as good of a time as i wanted but you know this, this run, I actually held this run together pretty well. Like, this run wanted to die so badly. One encounter is roughly 20 seconds. That's, there's not, that's just not true. If you're including the time between encounters, then that's not relevant because... Because those are steps that I would have taken anyway. Even even if I was repelled, right? So it's a, it's like it's like ten to twelve, depending on the length of the cry or something. Like it's somewhere in between those numbers, for sure. And I got six extra encounters, I think. So it's like maybe like a minute, but we'll see. We will see. I thought it was three Machops and three Zubats. But anyway, 
that's about to happen, so we'll see. God, this run is so good. <laughs> Minus 631 on my PV. Uh... <laughs> Bonk. No, I am definitely not doing anything with my hands today. This I'm going to be done streaming when the commentary is over. I mean, I'll stay for a minute. So get an encounter here. We're praying that it's Rattata. It's 45% Rattata, 45% Mankey, and 10% Spiro here. Uh... Mankey is 30% in the next bush, and you can rare candy it. Uh, and you can also weaken it. This is only 50% to get in the ball, which is quite annoying. But um, it's fine. As long as we get Rattata next, this was good. Not doing anything with my hand suggests AMQ. No, it doesn't. <laughs> AMQ is plenty of hands. Oh. Okay, so the reason I was confused... Okay, sorry. I need to stop talking to chat. Okay, so this this fight has actually trolled me so many times, and it's so stupid because... Wait, did this happen here? Oh, I forgot about this. It Was it this run that it happened? Yeah. So he, I forgot about this. Because I was so focused on the run at this point. So missing this blizzard, you're dead. Because then he just razor leaves, so 7% to just die there. So we get crit by Pidgeot. And I'm like barely outside of Torrent here. So you would X speed on Gyarados if you were in Torrent. And then I bite Gyarados, which is standard, and then he Hydro Pumps, and it crits. And then I'm thinking that Growlithe is not going to kill me from here. I almost healed anyway, because I wasn't sure. I'm thinking that Growlithe is not going to kill. But he actually does kill from here and so I wind up dying which is funny because record also has like a troll fight here I think but yeah double crit there it was not arranged that was guaranteed to kill me oh we already checked that yeah I did not I did not think Growlithe would kill actually With really good defense that like I had. But it didn't matter. And so I wind up having to use an extra spec here. But the fact that he used it and that it killed means it's probably quite likely that it died. But I bet it was close. Like real close. So I had to use another extra X spec there too. On that fight, it's just another spec gone. Yeah, the takedown miss actually mattered because then Psychic would have killed me, so I would have had to heal again. I wasn't thinking that agility would make him faster, but without the X speed, it does. That was pretty troll. But got right at here. 45%. That was good. Huh. 
Nice. <laughs> yeah. Man. I actually completely forgot about that Viridian rival. Must have been the adrenaline. That, that was quite unfortunate, honestly. How was this split not worse than it was? So the only po the only encounter you can get here is Psyduck, and I wound up having to not lose any steps for it. So that was good. Uh, I am worried that I am going to have to catch Onyx this run. So I do switch to Nidoking to weaken this, because this makes it a guaranteed catch instead of a 50-50. Almost went to Master Ball there, my guess. <laughs> so this was worth it. <laughs> I was like thinking about getting the Ultra Ball there, and then I was like, nah, I don't need it. Extra Ultra Ball to the side. Okay, so this... I basically want to avoid catching Onyx here. And Onyx is, Onyx is less likely on the next floor than he is on this one. So I decide, because I have two normal repels left... I could have... Uh, that I'm just going to use two normal repels to get to the next floor. To avoid having to catch Onyx. Or at least attempt to catch, uh, avoid having to catch Onyx. There are three things I need to catch here. Two of them need to be candy pokes, and one of them can be anything. 20% uh, Machop here, 20% Geodude, 10% Zubat, 20% rare encounters that are really good, and 30% Onyx, and 10% Marowak, actually. So it's like 10% uh, Marowak on the next floor as well. I actually think I shouldn't have repelled there and seen how far I got without getting an encounter. It wound up being like, I mean, I don't know. It, it works out either way, honestly. But I probably shouldn't have repelled the second time. I don't know. It was fine, honestly. That was fine. So Zubat is the best encounter, for sure, that I could have gotten here. Like, this was the best first encounter that I that 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 I could have gotten because this was this is only 10% and it's a candy poke. Uh, and the other two that I want, Geodude and uh, Machop, are 20% each. So, hoping for either Geodude or Machop here. Or a rare is good too, but kind of scary because then we need a candy poke. So, I actually get Machop. So, I still have a rare candy left, and this is at the level where it candies to Machop, or Machoke. So, when I catch this, it's worth two pokes, and I go from 57 to 59. Now... If you remember anything about this run, and what I talked about before, I crit Hypno this run. So I would be done with this catch, with zero useless encounters of this split so far. I would just be done. It would be over. But instead, that's not what happens. So I need to catch one more thing. And the game really makes me sweat it here, too. And Zubat. 10%. Pretty unlucky. <laughs> pretty sad. Would have even been happy to see Onyx there. But, like, whatever. You know, it's just one encounter. And Machop. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so now we're really sad about it. Mm. 
Machop again. Now we're really sad about it. <laughs> we're so sad about it. And Zubat again! Twenty percent for Machop, ten percent for Zubat. And then Machop again. So it was five extra encounters. Yeah. It was very, 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 very sad. <laughs> and Onyx is like the thing you never want to catch. Because Onyx is like 30% to get in the ball when you weaken it heavily. It's like so bad. I could have easily lost my run to this Onyx. But the fact that the Onyx first balled was quite lucky. For sure. Um, that definitely made up for like a reasonable amount of the catches. So, I mean, overall, I don't I mean, the split was obviously terrible because I fucking died, but, like, overall, this could have... I'm actually surprised this wasn't worse. Than it was. Yeah, it was actually less than I thought. I mean, because you also have to consider that, that, like, Hypno is kind of bad to catch sometimes. Because he'll, like, poison you. And he doesn't like to get in the ball. So, like, you know, if you catch something faster than Hypno, then, which we did, because it was a one ball Onyx. But. So, yeah. Probably closer to correct. I think three catches at Victory Road is very bad. I think fishing is the better play in that situation. Well, here's why you're wrong. Here's why you're wrong. The problem with that is that I I very often times need to catch two things in Victory Road anyway because I need things to rare candy. And catching three things in Victory Road is actually not bad. Um... Because there's so many rares that are good. Arbok, Machoke, Golbat, and uh, and Marowak. Uh, and Primeape. And Primeape. You can catch all of those. So those are 30% of the encounters on the floor I was on. 30%. That's, uh, that's just as likely as any of the Zubats or Geodudes that I got in that situation. There's nothing wrong with catching three things in Victory Road anyway. But but I needed to catch two candy pokes anyway, and I was worried about catching the Mankey early that I couldn't candy. I made the right decision in this run, like 100% on what to catch, I think. But yeah. You put Blastoise in the box to PC heal him, yeah. You do. You're, I mean, I'm like finishing off my evolves right now. Like, this is standard generally have like three to five evolves here normally four or five i would say like fishing is so bad chat like i know it seems nice and all like but it's so bad <laughs> It's so slow, and you don't, you're not even guaranteed to get the encounter, and you can get Magikarp trolled, and the Pokemon don't like to get in the ball, and it's, and it's so stupid. But yeah, I'm surprised this E4 round one split wasn't worse than it was, honestly, with all the dumb stuff. Oh, 
we're going to talk about it. I finally did this PC without doing anything retarded, though. Hey, it's dark grid. So, seven full restores, max max repel, standard buy. That, losing a minute to a record there is, like, completely fine, honestly. More like a minute 25, but yeah. No, you can't deposit with the yellow hand. It just picks it up or swaps it. So, this fight is four x specs. And equip the black glasses so Bite actually deals with Lorelei. Um, it's like pretty much the only way to deal with this fight, actually. So, three turns, and this is actually looking so good, even though we still need two more turns with no flinch, but. Uh, turn four hail here sucks, even though it's pretty much what you're expecting. He is likely to, very likely to hail. Like, very likely to hail. Got a good roll in the bite, though. Thank you, Shira. So I actually decide to heal here, I think, because I took so much damage. And what's important about this is that you don't want to heal on Lapras, because then Lapras can either paralyze you or confuse ray you. Uh, it sucked to have had to heal there, but I took so much damage from Dugong and the, the hail that's to come that it was just better. Also, chance that he surfs there. Instead of Ice Beam. Means that it's better because you don't get status. Protect his troll. Protect is so troll, but it's fine. Only one protect, I guess. Yeah, this fight is just uh, just Dugong and, and Lapras. All the other ones go down, and then I guess Cloyster can protect twice, but it doesn't actually matter. It's just slow. But the Lapras is so troll. It dies in three hits, and it has Confuse Ray and Body Slam, which paras. Body slam, para, on turn one, as usual. So I actually attack in here because I tank crit and I don't want to heal to full and then get confuse raid because she's much, much more likely to confuse ray when you're near full health. So I think I definitely made the right play there because I could have, if I was fully paralyzed, I actually could have just used bite again in that situation and it would have been fine. And now my HP lines up like pretty well for Bruno. Most of the time. So, yeah. Um, so this fight is probably... I don't know. Lorelai has trolled me more. But this fight... This fight is like secret troll. It'll get you when you least expect it. So this fight, you need to guard spec to avoid Rock Tomb lowering your speed, right? And then you need to set up two X specials and then be in Torrent to win the fight. If you're not in Torrent, you need four X specials. So get Rock Tomb, Rock Tomb. Earthquake. So I'm just outside of Torrent here and already at plus two. So I decided to go to plus three instead. So I need any damage here. Any damage here. Okay, so I'm actually going to pause the video for this part because this is such bullshit. So, 
I'm literally screaming any damage in world record right now, or in, in, the, in the record VOD right now, because I need to take any amount of damage. And here's why this is bullshit. There's two factors to why this missing is dumb. The first reason is that if he had Earthquaked instead, the maximum damage that Earthquake plus Mach Punch does is 60 with this defense. So that means that if he Earthquakes, I'm almost always fine anyway. And if he Rock Tombs, my HP is perfect for the rest of the Elite Four. And I can't stall again because this Onyx has Roar. And then once you're at plus three of a stat, he likes to Roar. So I literally have to attack in now that he missed that Rock Tomb. And I'm pissed about it. But now I make a genius I make a genius play. Okay? I'm gonna I'm pretty sure I make a genius play. And I X speed here. I X speed here. And this plays around literally everything. This X speed on this turn. Because if he sky uppercuts me here, which is by the way, guaranteed to not kill, then. I can super potion, and then if he rock tombs or mock punches or sky up because again, I'm fine. Uh, if he rock tombs on this turn, it lowers my speed, but I'm still faster than everything. Uh, and so anything that happens, I'm fine. So he gives me sky uppercut. I barely tank it. Now I'm at the range where rock tomb will kill, so he can rock tomb or mock punch. So I just super potion. To 59 again, and he misses Rock Tomb again. So dumb. So now I just spec to plus four, and he misses Rock Tomb again. <laughs> so now I'm not in torrent for Agatha. Literally so dumb. So dumb. Everything about this fight was so dumb. <laughs> I wound up not mattering for Agatha, but, like, God. Like, this. And so, because I had to use so many specs there, and earlier in the run, I now no longer have enough X specials to finish the run. So, I wind up having to teach Calm Mind to Mewtwo as an extra TM teach in this run because of how troll this Bruno fight was. Which I played perfectly, by the way. So stupid. So now here's even more nonsense. So this fight is generally X speed, X special, and then you win uh, if you're in torrent. But the problem is, is that I'm not in torrent. So now I have to go to plus three spec to make this fight actually work. So double team turn one is really standard. So I'm actually, I'm actually begging for him to use shadow punch. I'm pretty sure he's like not actually likely to shadow punch from here. Um, but I do actually get shadow punch. So now I just win. Which, so that was very lucky. But most of the time, I get fucked there and die because Bruno didn't give me Torrent. Yeah, you wouldn't get Calm Mind anymore if, if it wasn't a Gem Leader TM. But you would also buy more Expects. But honestly, when I routed, like... Calm Mind is a backup strat for Mewtwo if you run out of X specials. That was like a meme. Like I never thought that would actually happen. Because there's so many ways that you can just like avoid that happening. But this run just could not. I used too many. Uh, I mean I have most of the stuff memorized within like a pretty reasonable range. For the exact damage stuff does on different defenses, I have to check my menus or my, my notes sometimes, which you can see at exclamation point R2 notes. <laughs> and those are actually about to come in handy right now. Yeah. So this is just heal to full. You always heal to full for Lance. This fight is actually super troll, but uh, Pulse Effects actually came up with a, a better strat for this fight recently. 
you used to use bite spec ack blizz blizz but now you spec ack bite bite blizz which barely kills uh it's like 94 percent for those three moves to kill so you get an extra chance to flinch and you don't have to risk missing blizzard and if you do miss blizzard somewhere else in the fight you still have an extra blizzard um so this is actually like way better this was a pretty huge uh, find by pulse effect simo actually um so hyper beam here which is what i need to play around does 60 to 80 on this defense uh, and he'll only use it if it kills so i i actually get hit dragon rage dragon rage here which was unlucky to 79 so i actually can't heal this because it's so unlikely that he both hyper beams and i get hit so now i'm like praying for him to use bite here and i get dragon rage again so three dragon rages there was actually really really dumb because this it wound up leaving me having to full restore that does not work in any percent by the way shiro and it only works with 30 or 31 spec so you literally have to run 30 or 31 spec for like 18,000 reasons by the way uh it's it has to do with stat xp i think and when you level and what what x what stat xp you've gotten also, sometimes you're level 53 here in Fire Red Round 2 because you, like, missed XP to something. And then you have to, uh, you have to do the other strat then. But, yeah. By the way, uh, if you remember earlier in the run, I said my one fight misplay... It actually wasn't true because I forgot about Birdie and Rival. But my one fight misplay was in Elite Four. My hands are fine, but I haven't used them for anything in yesterday or today. So, I mean, if I try to again, then we'll see. I'm going to take the rest of today off from using my hands, though. Uh, technically, that Aerodactyl can get an Ancient Power Boost, but if you're in Torn, he still dies, so it doesn't matter. For any gaming or typing anyway okay so uh this fight you are praying to get a healless fight by pidgeot using its feather dance and sand attacks so what was the misplay well it's yet to happen yet and it actually wound up costing me a reasonable amount of time too and i didn't even notice it at the time because i'm i'm so not used to this fight that i got so you, the the standard fight here is Guard spec, X speed, X special three times, and then uh, X accuracy on the Venusaur, and then sweep. And you have to X act on the Venusaur because you your guard spec runs out and you can't risk getting sand attacked. Um, and also, this Pidgeot is favored to sand attack or feather dance. Even now, at this at this HP, he still is. But I but now he hits me twice in the first two turns. So now I'm more likely to get aerial ace. And he literally gives me Aerial Ace every turn. So now I'm in Torrent at plus two and dead to Aerial Ace, which means that I can just go here. But I'm like kind of freaking out because I haven't I haven't actually seen this fight since I started running this game again. And I, I forget for some reason that you still have to X accuracy here. You can't die because Venusaur only has Solar Beam to kill you. So I was actually supposed to X accuracy here. Um... Even though it's, like, reasonable to skip it overall for time save. But, yeah. I was actually supposed to uh, act there. Which was a mistake. Um, and what's dumb about plus two on the strat is that you actually have to blizzard Gyarados twice. It doesn't die to bite blizzard like it does at plus three. So... I actually really needed to use X accuracy there because I was using an extra blizzard. So obviously I have to heal here because um, Thrash does like 45 or something, which was st which is standard. Forty-one even. So blizzard, and then. So I'm like actually praying to hit this blizzard so hard. 
and I miss it. And then I have to heal again. But the torrent fight is pretty fast, so it's like, okay. But it sucks. And now I used seven. I used seven four stars. In in E four round one, you usually use. No, it does. It dies to it dies to torrent surfeit plus three. Shiru, but not plus two. Real King, welcome back for three months. Thanks for your seven, baby. I appreciate you. So yeah, this this what God, dude, this elite four was so dumb. It was so dumb. I was supposed to save so much time, and I saved none. <laughs> Sucks to suck. Yeah, I actually lost time to Xarian Z4 round one, which is like crazy. Yeah, I mean, not not X hacking there was a misplay, and I didn't even notice it at the time because I was like so worried about it, and I was like, oh shit, I have to do the torrent fight, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't mess that up because it had been forever since I'd seen it. This is a commentary run. Those donations already happened, and I already thanked them. But I appreciate your concern. How are my hands? I mean, my hands feel fine today, but I haven't used them in two days. Why no game sound? Because I don't want to hear myself talk twice. He's not even likely to extreme speed if it doesn't kill. So now we begin the post-game quest to unlock the second and harder round of the Elite Four so that we can destroy them. Stretch your hands. I mean, I do. I am doing hand stretches. No, I'm not doing. I'm not doing speed runs today. I'm done streaming. After. This. Nice. Where the hell was I going? The goal of the post-game quest is to get a ruby and a sapphire to hook it up to this crazy machine to link this region to the Hoenn region so that Pokemon can be transferred between the two regions. And then the Elite Four uses that to buff their team way up with new Pokemon from other gens and at a much higher level and with more troll movesets. Okay, so this movement's kind of scary, actually. It's here that I noticed that I have five X specials, which is not nearly enough. So I'm like, okay, well, it's gone, mind. So we got to get around that girl. She can see you from one tile away. And then we got to run bike this guy. And we got to not go one too many tiles here. You hit those trainers. You got to pause here. Don't forget it. Or you can hit those guys. Those are two trainers and your run's over. One step to the left. Go all the way to the left here. You hit her and she actually would have hit me. But then it was over. Thank goodness. How did I obtain the data? I don't know. Other people obtained it, and then I memorized it. So most of these fights are free. Why did I pulse? Surf's better.
Um, yeah, this fight is just bite four. Don't get quick attacked, but it doesn't really matter. And we're have to. We're, we're just gonna have to see how my hands keep up. Moving forward, <laughs> my hands actually feel really like fine today, but they felt bad when I woke up. I think I really need the break. I honestly might even take another day off, depending. We'll see. I'm definitely taking tomorrow off. I'm definitely. I'm, I'm talking about another day after tomorrow. I'm definitely taking tomorrow off. I might actually take two days off though. We'll see. Yeah, I am definitely going five days a week for sure. Dude, it's always scary because you're in max repels and... Oh my god, that movement. I think I actually had an aneurysm at that point. I cannot even believe that. <laughs> it was so crazy looking. And this is where I'm like, oh my god, my hands are just, like, actually done. I, I, my hands, ugh. It's, and I mean my fingers when I say my hands, by the way. It's, like, only my fingers. I do, Arcadius, I do. I miss the run into bike. It's funny, because I hit all the other ones perfectly, but I miss one that I never miss. I've been doing hand exercises for like a little over a week now. Honestly, it doesn't really seem to be helping like at all, <laughs> but I'm going to keep doing it. I've been consistent about it. I've even been doing it while I've been doing this commentary. So yeah, this is, uh, I mean, there's actually quite a bit of execution on these islands that are, like, scary, I guess. This next part is kind of, like, you have to do this ice cave, and then it's, like, I don't know, it's not free. But there's no real punishment here, but then there's spinners to run into bike, there's walkers, there's all kinds of nonsense. Yeah, so that's actually one of the reasons I'm considering taking another day off is because my stress balls and the equipment with which I need to... Actually, I don't actually know. I don't think the stuff I need to practice yellow on console is going to get here in time for that anyway. So I may have to do emulator practice. Which, uh, or like, I don't know. At least I can learn the manips on console. Anyway, didn't open the Pokemon menu there. I always used to forget that I was on Pokemon and then have to go down to bag there. Oh yeah, that's right. I maybe could do that. I'll look into that. Oh, did did you math geek? I, I I will. I'll play it again after. After I'm done here. In thirty minutes. <laughs> if someone reminds me.
So I actually don't know how I did it, but I actually still saved time on record on this split, despite my hands absolutely killing me, which I am proud of. Because <laughs> this split is mostly execution and quick attack. Yeah, I lost three seconds to PB though, not surprised. My PB was so good there. And then careful to remember which one you're on, Escape Rope or Max Rappel. And I actually go up there, even though you're supposed to mash A on that fly, to fly, <laughs> like cricket or something. I've never forgotten that before. I'm like falling apart at this point. I was like, or like physically, I guess. So you can actually get past the spinner if you react to him turning. And then you run into bike him. And I actually miss it. You're you're not likely to get hit there at all. But I I could have lost the run, or actually it still would have been record. But I could have wanted to die because I hit that guy. Do you actually see? I take that so safely because like it's really easy to like go an extra step after a repel text box wears off. So I like stop and like make sure. I don't think I had an absurd number of bonks, honestly. I bike here, though, which is retarded. I remember that. Yeah. It's just slower at the bike. Because of the audio lag. Went all the way around town there. It's funny, all of this loses like no time, but it's just whatever. Okay, now the only island that actually matters. Run into bike spinner, walker, and dumb fights. Get the run into bike, bonk. Yeah, she could have hit me there. She could have turned around and hit me there for sure. She had time to. It was like pretty unlikely, but it was possible. Because I bonked. But yeah. Happens. Yeah, I still would have recorded. But. It does, I mean, I would have hated the run and continued running it, honestly. Yeah, that wheezing is arranged too. And it has smokescreen and it loves to use it. I've never seen it use anything other than smokescreen. You wouldn't actually think that it has AI, but... That was dumb. Yep, I was too, I, I, I was not in the mood to share that story at that time.
I also got a hypno pattern here I've never seen. Which was dumb. But also, I mean, better than it could have been worse, right? We get swagger, but it misses. And then I actually get Swagger again, which I've never seen. I'm pretty sure he's just 1 in 4 to Swagger. Um, and it wound up not really mattering, but it certainly could have. Right, and, and now I have what is easily my largest complaint of this entire run. with the luck that I got. Because if you remember before, there were three rock tombs that I needed to hit. And now he's not even guaranteed, he's not even likely to use rock tomb. And it hits, which is fine. It doesn't even matter. It's only the second one that matters. And so he actually, he actually rock tombs me twice so now i'm slower than everything i actually was expecting to be slower than muck i think that actually might have been a speed tie or something because i swear i was like slower than him one one run but and so now i'm slower than vile plume and she leads sleep powder so what do you even do here like what do you actually do because i have no four stores by the way because I used seven on E4 round one. So I just do this. And now, and now Arbok Sludge does like, uh, like 40 or 50. I think like 40, 40. And so like, what do you do here? I have no forward store. And if I parahill, then he just either poisons me or, 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 or I don't tank too. So I just have to. So I just have to surf. Now I have no X speeds, and it wouldn't be worth using them even if I did, because I'm parried and minus two speed. So dumb. Um. Well, he's guaranteed to two shot me. So I parry heal and potion here, because I stay in torrent exactly with the potion, but now I tank the Golbat if I miss the range. I think sometimes Weezing, probably not with the special defense, actually. Weezing was probably guaranteed to kill, but Weezing 75% to die, and I still had a revive. Arguably should have just... But I can't even heal to full here, is the thing. Because, like, even if I wanted to heal to full, which was probably correct, I couldn't, because I had no, no full restores <laughs> left somehow, which has never happened to me in any run I've ever done. So I think I made the right call here, being an exact torrent. Those were 11 and 12 and 16 to die, respectively, with 31 IV. The surf management seemed a bit weird. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just, I just became aware at the last second that like, it was technically, it was, I wasn't actually sure if Porygon died to a non torrent waterfall. I'm pretty sure it does, but I wasn't actually positive because that had never happened to me before. So I just surfed it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it just dies either way, but...
But yeah, whatever. It still save time. <laughs> What's the problem with with uh, with warehouse? You didn't even lose time. <laughs> I did on PP though. Chat is like, why don't you just go buy more egg specials? You're buying four stores anyway, Gunner. Why don't you just buy more egg specials? That was chat. I remember. I'll never forget. <laughs> so we linked up the regions. Now the Elite Four is buffed up. Now we just have to go get a Pokemon that's good enough to actually beat them. To just see if you can fish up an X special. <laughs> uh, and this item on the ground here is actually a floor store, but one isn't enough. So I have to buy them anyway, so it's not worth picking up. Bonk into encounter. What can you do? No, I've never used escape route there because I'm always super aware of that one. Just like I've never taught Fury Cutter to center it in gold because it's like too juicy. It's too obvious of a mistake. So I'm like so out of it at this point. My hands are actually in so much pain. And like, I'm pissed that this run isn't as good as it should be. And so I actually don't even realize, but I don't name Mewtwo here, which I don't know how much time this loses. I'm guessing like 15 seconds. Probably not even, honestly. It's only five fights. Maybe 10. Because I was comparing it to Kyogre, but I forgot Kyogre has a lot more fights. It's probably like 10. I mean, I don't know. You could calculate it by just like finding out how many times Mewtwo's name pops up. How much time it lost. Yeah, one frame is one character. So it saves five frames every time you his name comes up. So his if his name comes up 12 times, then that's one second. No, it's five frames. His name is still one letter. So actually, buy full restores and revives there. You normally don't buy anything there. But I have zero full restore, so I have to. And since I was in the Mart anyway, I figured I would just change my champion strategy, pick up the max revive, buy extra revives, and buy extra full restores. So that everything chat told me to do would be in the 
stupid final fight. And then some guy in chat says, why not buy one more full restore? <laughs> God. <laughs> not naming him does save a little time, yeah. So first thing that happens in E4 round two, signal beam crit. I'm like, oh my God, it's just, it's happening again. It's just happening again. It's happening. I was so mad at this point. I was just like actually done. I was considering just like stopping. Like I, I hate this run. I'm done. Somebody says it begins and everyone's spamming use recover. <laughs> uh, so then we miss fire blast and miss lovely kiss, which didn't actually matter because I needed to four store anyway, by the way. So that lovely kiss uh, miss did not matter. So, I am actually not positive at this point that Steelix is not going to kill me. And I have to full restore for Agatha anyway. So, it may have been correct for me to just full restore here because I'm pretty sure Earthquake can kill from 100 with some Mewtwo's. But, I mean, I had a max revive and revives anyway, so it was just, like, whatever. So I actually missed the Fire Blast into Earthquake, and I just Fire Blast again because I'm pissed. Uh, and then I actually have to sweat Mock Punch here, which is, like, the dumbest thing ever. But I'm not even sure this Hitmonchan has Mock Punch at the time that he uses it. And I'm not even sure that it's going to kill me at this point. But I think it will from 12, because I think the minus defense nature actually may have mattered there. I don't even remember how much it does, but... It does 21. So could have mattered, yeah, actually. Or at least two different, like the worst and best me too could have mattered there. Did I lose? I'm just losing so much time on these, on these fights. Like it's actually crazy how much time I lost to, to just nothing in these late game attempts or in these late game fights. Yeah, both E4s were so bad. So then we have Agatha, AKA don't get crit by Mistrevious. Racing on, welcome back for five months. I just actually, I haven't thanked anybody for the sheds this whole time, but I, like, actually just did that, like, reflexively. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so far, this E4 has had get crit by signal beam, miss two fire blasts, have to heal for mock punch. Well, to be fair, I literally couldn't see your donation because, like, I don't have anything open. I only saw the sub because I had a chat open. But, yeah.
So yeah, this doesn't die to Psychic unless you have a plus special attack nature and godly special attack, and then it's still a shitty range. And we get crit by Shadow Ball. And it lowers my special defense. <laughs> I just lose so much time to nothing. I have to heal all of this HP back now. Like... <sighs> So stupid. So now because I have used so many X specials this run, I have to teach Calm Mind, which I would not normally do. I would just spec three times here. And I have to actually teach Calm Mind over Fire Blast, and I can't teach Earthquake yet because I need all four moves for either this fight or the next one. My Calm Mind is literally so slow. Like, even using Calm Mind itself is slower than X Special because of the text box and the, and the, and the animation. It's pretty dumb. So safeguard, calm mind times three, and then win. Would have been nice if I had good special attack here. Could have just gone to plus two, but I still would have had. Maybe I wouldn't have done calm mind then. I don't know. I mean, the only other thing he can do besides Thunder Wave is Dragon Dance. And it seems like he's overwhelmingly favored to Thunder Wave. Like, I've only seen Dragon Dance one turn ever. And then, yeah, I don't know. This this fight is probably the main reason Mewtwo is so broken. Because, like, you literally just do that and then you win. Uh, Kingdra is a dragon water type Pokemon. And even if Shockwave killed, it would be a wasted input. No, this time is slower than, than the first really good run I would have had. But not by that much. Now, I have to teach Earthquake. And I forgot that I was already on TM Case. Because I taught Calm Mind. Over Calm Mind! <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> So dumb. Uh. I mean, I could have taught it over calm or over over safeguard as well. Yeah, you can, but I was you. You normally don't have to register the TM case because you just teach Earthquake during the same menu that you elixir. But this run, I had to use it twice. But yeah, I should have registered it this run. 
because I had to teach Palm Mind. Okay, so new strat. <laughs> X attack three times and pray that Alakazam Calm Mines three times, which it usually does. We actually got a really bad pattern here. Uh, Calm Mind, Psychic, Psychic. Like, Calm Mind on this turn is so much better, because then the fight's just over. But now I had to sweat it somewhat. Because I have to heal on Gyarados now, because it doesn't die, and it has Hyper Beam. He's like 3% to reflect per turn. If he reflects, it's really bad. Um, like really, really, really bad on the last turn. And if it's on the first turn, it doesn't really matter. Gyarados is only bad if you get a special default from, from Alakazam. Because then it can Hydra Pump you instead of Hyper Beam. And then that doesn't... That can just loop you in healing. But just get Hyper Beam here and no, uh, hi I mean, rather, yeah. So, see, we got Hydro Pump, but it didn't put me to an HP where it would, where Hydro Pump would kill again because I didn't get a special default. And that's why getting special default can be really bad with that pattern. I was also scared I was going to put him into Heal Rage here. Shockwave doesn't kill unless you get a plus one or you have absolutely godly special attack. But yeah. This fight is just pretty much don't get reflect and don't get some insane combination of bad luck and you win. There are some caveats with certain attacks, but like 25 plus probably. I don't know exactly how much you need. Just plus nature is usually probably good enough, actually. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to let this play until the actual end time. But there you have it. Fire Red Round 2 World Record Commentary. No, I'm not going for sub 330. I'm done. I'll go, but I'll come back if someone beats me. But am I satisfied with this run? I mean, like, I don't know. I guess. Like, not like super yes, but like yes. I'm a little annoyed about some of the things that happened, especially because some of it was, like, such bullshit. But, I mean, I didn't play perfectly either. So. Yeah, now, like, an hour of alert spam. <laughs> Did mark me too. So sad. Yeah, that was a 55, by the way. So, yeah. All right. So, thanks for watching the Pokemon Fire Red Round 2 World Record Commentary, and I will see you guys next time.